December 2021, one of the Gambia's most crucial elections is here. At Kerfatu, we got you covered. Our team of credible and knowledgeable analysts will bring you exclusive analysis of the event step by step and ballot by ballot coverage. They will be joined by reputable studio guests to help analyze and break down key ballot issues to meet your needs. As candidates battle for the soul of the Gambia, our team of panelists will get you the information you need to make informed choices. Join our coverage, Race for the State House, every Thursday at 6 p.m. You decide, we get you covered. Your voice, your ballot, with Kerfadu. For the first time in the history of the Gambia, Gambia Printing Publishing Corporation proudly introduces the Bibliomatic Exercise Book Printing Machine. The machine has the capacity to print more than 20,000 books per hour. Yes, 20,000 books per hour. It also prints magazines, newspapers, calendars, flyers, normal books and all kinds of printed documents plus items at affordable prices. With the Bilomatic printing machine, GPPC can now render high-quality and non-size restricted printing service supply across the sub-region. Rush now and partner with GPPC for all your public and private printing service needs. Print with us today and you'd be offered highly professional, reliable and efficient service delivery by our team of experts. The Gambia Printing and Publishing Corporation is here to meet all demands and is reliable at all times. For more info, contact us on 437-4493 or 437-4402. GPPC is Gambian and it's yours. When we touch down, but I broke down. Gamtel G Fiber, now you can enjoy super fast internet in gigabytes. G Fiber is affordable, stable, secured, and accessible to homes, businesses, and enterprises. With Gamtel G Fiber, the future is speed. Gamtel, creating a brighter future in communication. Gamsel data, now even better. Enjoy 20% extra data on all Gamsel data bundles. Buy 20 megabytes and get extra 4 megabytes. Buy 50 megabytes and get extra 10 megabytes. Buy 100 megabytes and get extra 20 megabytes. Any amount of Gamsel data bundle you buy, you will receive 20% extra data for free. Dial star 302 star. Data amount hash. Or go to your Yai bottom menu and choose your data bundle now. Gamsel data is fast. Last longer and very reliable. Gamsil Yai Borom. Are you thinking of owning your dream homes? EJ Investment is here for you. Secure our quality bungalows with two, three, or four bedrooms. Or our story building, three or four to five bedrooms at very affordable prices with flexible payment plans. At our Sanyang Sea View Estate, where you can enjoy the cool breeze with modern infrastructure such as the roads, covered drainage system, modern electrification with street lights, gated entrance with security posts, and social amenities such as gas station, shopping mall, medical clinic, park, schools, children daycare, and a lot more. Our dedicated team of professionals will keep the estate clean at all times, provide security and patrol team within the estate premises, install latest technologies such as CCTV, Wi-Fi, home network installation, solar panel, 
and power backup system. Also, check out for our additional home facilities and interior design service, such as premium tiling, wall plaster, home landscape, fingerprint home lock, and a lot more. Visit our office at Senegambia Kololi Highway and get a free site visit tour or contact us on 4464-838. WhatsApp us on 3259-220 or you can visit our Facebook page or Instagram on EJ Investments. EJ Investments, we are first in properties. Hello and welcome to another edition of the Race for the State House. I think this is going to be our last episode before mm. elections and we are going to spend some time here because last week we were not here. Uh, with me again, the usual panelists, uh, Ali Matu, uh, Abdullahi, Esther and Lamin Cham just walked in. Um, gentlemen and ladies, welcome to the program. Thank you for having us once again. Alima, mm -hmm. what's your assessment of the campaign? Two, three days. Today is the official day of close of campaign. Yeah. Um, we are going to, uh, to the polls on Saturday. Yeah. What is your assessment of the campaign so far? The campaign generally. Um, it's been an interesting one, um, I must say. And even though we've seen moments where we have moments of uncertainty about our electoral process, about where we lie as a democratic state, but um, we've seen some political majority. In, in, in some senses, not with the remarks, but we've seen, and I think it's important that the political campaign, or the, from the nomination to the campaign, brought out very important issues that we in the previous years didn't quite focus on in our, in our electoral process. Um, the, the stance of the I, IEC, for instance, its credibility, the judicial system and how important it is, and also the campaign trails, what issues we've been seeing um, policy issues coming up. We've said here that they're not focusing on, on policies a lot, but we've seen policies here and there. Obviously, we've seen personal attacks. We've seen um, candidates hitting each other below the belt, but the public's reaction in some of these instances also, I think, Yes, we focus a lot on how worried we are, but then sometimes when I see the political discourses that some of the issues addressed during the campaign drive, I see some political um, education in this country to a sense. And considering our history, that we are still in a, a very fresh post-dictatorial um, era, I'm glad that um, we have issues like youth involvement, multi-party issues, and all of that being addressed in, in, in this campaign trail. Yes, we cannot go without mentioning some of the defamatory remarks, some of the hate speeches that, that have been going on. And, and some of the, if for lack of a better word, desperate measures we've seen the incumbent um, embark on in their campaign trail. So generally, I would say it's been an interesting one but then one that has addressed very key issues that is not just based on voters' um, political competition, but political participation, which I am very keen about. Our electora electorate understanding from these campaigns that the election goes beyond just the competitions we see. People taking, sort of taking that power and they're driving that from the campaigns of their political participation, how much power they hold as political participants. And, and I think that has been driven a lot by some of the things we've been hearing during the campaign period. And like you said, it has ignited a lot of issues, which I believe would mm -hmm. make this a very interesting topic of this, yes, today. Abdullah, what is your assessment of the campaign so far? Um, this, this election uh, is, is very different to, to probably um, all the elections that we had since 1994. Uh, but even if you go back to uh, Jawara's time, um, I, I, I think this is different in so many, so many ways mm -hmm. because the, um, the, the issues that we are confronted with um, in terms of retaining the incumbency or changing. So, uh, the campaign has been very vibrant. I think it is fair to say that, um, for example, if you look at the UDP, 
okay, um, you see a, a highly sophisticated way of organization, you know, up and down the country, lo lots of diaspora, um, UDP members come in to participate and help the process as well. You also see the NPP because obviously the incumbent um, and Barrow, you know, doing everything to maybe have a lot of money being spent up and down the country. Um, right from the nomination, looks like it's also uh, um, competition for for crowds. Yeah. You know, so it looks like if there is um, a, you know a rally today by by the MPP pulling a significant a massive crowd, and at UDP the following day they they're trying to get even a larger crowd. So you've been you've been seeing that. So, but the newcomers, um, particularly. Um, SRFAL has also made the whole process a little bit more vibrant, okay? Because during Jammeh's time, it's always been um, UDP or Jammeh. But for most of those elections, um, the 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 out the, with just a formality of going to the court of going to the polls. But um, you know, Jammeh retained 70% um, of 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 the um, of of the um, electorate. Um, so so this campaign over the last few weeks, the the candidates been traveling up and down the country, selling their agenda. Um, and it is even more interesting because, as we speak, we don't know uh, what is going to happen um, on the, because it is too close to call. We don't know how this is going to pan out. Um, so I think that has made the, the campaign even even more interesting because the stakes are high uh, and the uncertainty surrounding the outcome, even as we speak now, you you know, it's difficult. So I think I think that that kind of made the the entire uh, the entire campaign um, even more interesting. Um, Relatively, it has been um, peaceful, uh, but you can question the the fairness and the credibility and the and and the integrity of of some of the things. There are allegations of significant money being been been uh, been plowed in in certain uh, communities just to try and influence. So whether that is inconsistent with the recently signed code of conduct, mm -hmm. uh, but those are certain issues. But I think the the whole vibrancy of the election um, and, the, and the campaign period is one that, that that's very interesting because of the, the the nature, the unusual character of this election. Esther, are we going to make predictions today? <laughs> <laughs> well, I just predictions. I don't, I don't, I don't <laughs> <to> predict. <laughs> but your assessment of the, the, the campaign so far? Yeah, um, quite interesting. Um, you know, like Abdullah said, you know, it's been. Um, in a relatively peaceful campaign. Um, we have not, I think, to our two, year, two, two weeks campaign, we have not had or seen major, major incidents um, that will call for alarm. Um, but then this is the first post dictatorship presidential election in this country. And stakes are high. I mean, a lot is at stake at this moment. Um, it's an election that governments will use as an opportunity not only to you know, sustain their sovereignty or to fight for their sovereignty governments will also use as an opportunity to consolidate the democracy that was gained, um, that was restored in 2016. Um, you know, it's it's also an opportunity for Gambians to hold politicians to account, especially as I've always seen incumbent, um, based on the, the, the reason why we are here today. Um, we know that in 2016, the mission was to salvage us, to bring that system change, to bring in that new Gambia that everybody was talking about. There for five years down the line, it's an opportunity for us to assess and ask ourselves questions where we were um, five years ago, where we are five years now, and where we're heading to um, in the next five years and beyond. This election presents that opportunity for us to answer the questions as Gambians, especially as electorates who have the opportunity um, to elect a president on Saturday. Um, you know, we've seen you know, some inflammatory remarks being made through, you know, during the campaign, although you know, could be treated as, you know, one or two, but then, you know, this also could have great impacts. I've always said that, um, you know, this year's election will be decided um, on two things. You know, two models of voting will dominate. It's the, either the party identification model or the social identification of voting, that people will tend to vote, you know, not necessarily on issues or policies or programs that these candidates have to offer. And that is why one thing that is historic in the history of this election is that for the first time we had presidential debate, yeah. even though majority of these candidates, you know, four of them did not appear, but two of them appeared. At least, you know, governments were able to have the opportunity to listen to one or two of their policies and programs. Um, but it's it's really it's it has been um, generally, I mean, relatively peaceful and calm atmosphere. 
um, that, you know, we have also seen international observers in the country right now, you know, to observe the election. Um, there were some challenges as well along the way, um, with some candidates being rejected, you know, we had them going to court and the court ruling that the IEC should accept for the nominations from them. And then IEC going to the extent of rejecting those, um, those for the nominations again. You know, the, the whole thing like now people saying that in fact questioning the credibility of the IEC and whether they'll be able to deliver a free, fair election. But I think also a lot of propaganda has been going on, you know, yeah. in and out there. You know, some parties, like you said, you know, even the money that is being used in some communities, um, that is obviously against the code of conduct. You know, if it is, if it tantamounts to vote by, because one of the, you know, elements of, you know, of that, of that code of conduct has to do with vote by, that is to discourage vote by. But more importantly, um, of recent, what we have seen, um, has to do with you know, you know, informatory remarks or derogatory remarks made by some people, and specifically you know, Dembo Boja, which is also against the code of conduct that the presidential candidates themselves signed, and President Barrow himself signed that. So I think you know, it was an opportunity for President Barrow to stop such when you know it was being said. But I think also we have seen one thing that was unique also has to do with um, the peace message at some point. You know, it's all out there by some candidates. I've, I've heard, you know, I've seen Dabo at some point tweet, you know, about peace, you know, one Gambia, you know. At some point also, Halifa consistently talking to Gambians about voting, you know, for, for to live in a dignified and prosperous life. I've also seen, you know, ESA, you know, talking about issues, I mean, happening in the country from corruption to, you know, the healthcare problems, education here and there. Abdullah Jameh, who obviously, you know, has been talking, measured in his comments. I'm not sure I've seen or had, you know, any, I mean, disturbing mm -hmm. remarks being yeah. made by him throughout the campaign period. I think he has been there. The incumbent, too, at some point, you know, trying to, yeah, sell out, you know, whatever he has to, to the electorate. But I think also at the starting of the campaign. I think maybe at the tail end of the campaign, he was behaving a bit better. But at the beginning of the campaign, I think he used, you know, greater part of his campaign um, attacking the UDP and Hussein Odabo, which wasn't necessary in my view. I think the campaign was an opportunity for him to talk to Gambians, like in the past five years, this is what I've promised you and this is what I've delivered. It was not an opportunity for him to personally be attacking individuals, um, attacking what they've done for the country, and also making revelations of, you know, some personal conversations you have here and there with some people. Those are, those are not expected. But we have also seen, interestingly, you know, the president himself going into a war of words with, um, shall I say, Mama Kande, or even Jami himself, because Jami was giving platform, which really disturbed the president, that, um, you know, why will you, uh, Jami shouldn't be giving that platform, you know, to create chaos in the Gambia. But then the question also is, many people say that Baro himself does not have the moral authority to speak against Mama when it comes to giving platform to Jami because he embodied Jame, he created all this and gave him the opportunity. Um, so I think quite it has been interesting. And I think um, Gambians on, on, the, on, the, on the second, of, on the fourth of December, on Saturday, will finally decide. We have heard from the, from the candidates, you know, we've heard from their supporters, we've seen, you know, the campaign is still on. Today is the final day. And let's wait. In less than 24 hours, Gambians will head to the polls and elect a new president, whether it will be the current president to continue or it will be Another man going to number one Marina Parrot. Let's see what the future holds for us on Saturday. Lavin Chan, what stood out for you during the last few days of the campaign? Well, yes. Uh, well, uh, I got stuck in traffic, so yeah. <laughs> uh, that explains my, my lateness. Um, I think I will categorize the campaign into the lows and the highs. Mm -hmm. um, uh, I will start by saying that. Uh, we, the whole nation, had hoped that uh, we would have matured as uh, uh, a people in democracy um, by 2021. At least that was what was uh, envisaged when the coalition government uh, wanted us to vote for them. Uh, and that is being mature and having a much level playing field going into the elections. You see, if that had been in place, Perhaps some of the things that uh, uh, Esa and Abla have described may not have happened. In the first place, you know, the ambition that uh, the winner of uh, the elections, if it was the coalition, and it happened to be the coalition candidate which won, would not contest subsequent elections immediately after, the, uh, after his term ends. So 
well, with Barrow, who eventually became the winner, going now for uh, seeking re-election, that means, of course, that has dented any hope of uh, uh, that level, you know, that playing field being leveled. So that is where we, we got it wrong in the first place, because if he had not been in the ballot box, perhaps by now some of these issues we are talking about would not have arise, because, I mean, he would have done uh, a lot of service to the nation uh, by letting people know that, yes, these are the new rules we play by. Nobody will have any unfair advantage over each other. But the fact that he became interested uh, to run, that one betrayed um, actually the confidence, the hope that people have on the coalition uh, government. And secondly, it makes leveling playing field, you know, leveling the playing field very difficult. And uh, in fact, sadly, it brought us back to the, you know, backward nature of politics uh, that used to exist here, which they, the coalitions, actually through their agreements and their pronouncements, wants to eradicate. And that is uh, inducement, you know, character assassination, uh, I mean, uh, how to call it, uh, ethnic or other kind of issues instead of the matter, you know, the things that matters to the people. So I think my first disappointment was that we do not have a playing field as we should have, actually. Okay, but then when you go on, I will try to assess, uh, if you look at the campaign of the political parties, I think, like my colleagues have said, uh, generally has been uh, relatively peaceful, given the polarized nature of the uh, country going into these elections. You know, one would have expected that we have done better than anyone would have expected because you have to be frank a lot of people had a lot of anxiety you know given the polarized nature of uh, things going into these elections but generally if you analyze how the politicians the parties and the supporters have fared you have to give credit credit to gambians for comporting themselves very well uh, you know despite all the sometimes provocations and sometimes antagonisms uh, that comes from you know all quarters of the uh, political players. So generally, so peaceful, everybody has well well compacted, which is a credit to all Gambians. Um, now, if you look at the campaign, um, I think the National People's Party, um, which of course listen, we have to go for every vote at whatever cost. Uh, and sometimes you can say they say are not very much uh, morally acceptable. You know things like reaching out to uh, opponents and abandoning principles, reaching out to uh, opponents you know, on the basis that we are preaching reconciliation. When actually those who should reconcile with you know have been abandoned, uh, that that cannot be said to be um, you know a genuine. Uh, electoral agenda. Uh, I don't. I do not agree with that. And to go for every vote, no matter what it takes, also is not a decent way of uh, politicking. So I get disappointed a little bit uh, with that. And there are allegations, and you know, in many cases, very, very, very clear allegations of inducement. Like we saw a lot of money, really in Dallas here, and so we saw photographs of cabinet ministers. And this was during election campaign. Whatever purpose the money was. That was the wrong time to present it because it, it definitely saw to everybody that there is inducement in our election process. That should not have happened. Okay, I saw that the most aggressive campaigns came from UDP, obviously NPP, and to some extent SFL. Of course, they had always maintained their, um, you know, their gradual and um, strong, you know, strong messaging, as you as always do. But the most aggressive uh, campaigns were UDP, uh, SFL to some extent, and NPP. Obviously, we know that these NPP and UDP are the parties that are really going to eventually <laughs> going to be the winner. One of them will definitely be the winner. Um, and if oh, you sure. don't ask me, 
uh, I, you know, if you look at the things, the realities of the ground, sure are they are the biggest. I just spoke to Esa Falvo. Yes, he I heard him say that he will be second. He said he, he, and, will be second. he and UDP are one and two, actually. Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. but, but to be realistic, uh, if you ask me, I think it has to be either it's UDP too close to call them. or NPP, and mm -hmm. it's, it's close to call. Mm -hmm. Um, I saw uh, that, unfortunately, the low sides have been the, uh, some of the uh, aspirants we expected to be in the race did not make it to the ballot box. That's quite unfortunate. And uh, I think that is really, you know, a gloss from the uh, credibility of the IEC. Because at the end of the day, even though they are the ones who should decide, but we expect their decision really to be generally acceptable and to be query free. Um, you know, in areas like the case of the IA, the CA, and my party and others, I think those things could have been avoided. Like the court said, if they had given them time um, to replace the invalid nomination attestations, perhaps it wouldn't have come to all that. So that is a low side, and it dented the credibility of the IEC. But generally, I think uh, the IEC is doing and continues to do a very good work. So I would say that. Uh, I think we must give credit to us as Gambians for so far conducting ourselves very well and keeping the peace and I hope we continue in the next 48 hours uh, to keep uh, the election process peaceful. Keeping it honest, uh, let's talk about Dembo Boyang's um, statement uh, at the rally. Yeah. Um, Dembo's statement, mm -hmm. and I think you know we must be honest, mm -hmm. um, Dembo is an elderly statesman mm -hmm. and he is a presidential advisor. That is a huge title. Mm -hmm. He's also the religious advisor. Mm -hmm. But I do remember, I remember very well the 2018 UDP Congress. Mm -hmm. He made similar statements like this. Mm -hmm. And he said, Manika mm -hmm. That was a direct attack to the Mandinkas, even though he, well, he is Mandinka. But he makes a similar uh, statement in front of the president, attacking a particular tribe and saying, um, if those people rule, this is what is going to happen. This is hate speech, and it can, it can bring serious problems in our society, if not handled. Mm -hmm. We have seen um, people condemning it, but I think it's, going to, it's, it's important to, to condemn statements like this in our political discourse, especially coming from somebody like Dembo Boja. Mm -hmm. This is not expected from him. He has done yeah. his part in Gambian political um, scenario. The role he played during the, um, the 2016 coalition, Everybody said he was, he was one of the leaders who really um, got everybody together for us to be able to have a new Gambia. His role in that, and today the role he's playing, bringing these divisive comments into, into, into our political discussion, is, is just disappointing. That's what I have said. I've said that, uh, you see, the MPP have reached up to a point, and they themselves declared that uh, losing these elections amounts to death. As, it's a question of death as far as they are concerned, at least that's what President Barrow said. Now, there is the concept that all of them have, that we cannot afford to lose the elections. But in the process, they stoop low, you know, so low uh, that you get disappointed that people of that kind of maturity and respect, you, you know, will behave like that. I hate to discuss tribes, you know, in my reportage or in my media appearances. But then if you have to tell the people uh, exactly what the part of the issues are, you have to come and, and, and you know, come to the point exactly what he said. Yeah. I think what he said is very unfortunate. Unfortunate and a deliberate misinformation because it is not possible yeah. and not imaginable that, you know, when a certain party, uh, you know, takes over the country, a whole lot of communities uh, and, and ethnic groups will be driven from this country. I think even that's nonsensical from the core. It was only calculated to mislead. And you can see fear and desperation in his voice. Because apparently he wants to appeal to a certain category of voters, not on issues, but you know, to whip the ethnic feelings against another group of ethnic groups. That is totally unacceptable and it should be condemned. Uh, and in fact, it can backfire. Yeah. It can backfire. If you are saying that if a certain community or a certain ki kind of tribe comes to power, all the other tribes will be sent away. What are you telling the people directly? That this particular tribe uh, is our enemies. And that is totally unacceptable. Uh, that cannot be condoned in our society. And it is not true. It's not never going to happen. Nobody can <laughs> send Gambians from here just because they come from 
uh, another background. Is it this, is all these problems uh, are, are fueled by politicians who are desperate, bankrupt of ideas, they have nothing to sell, and they want to win at all costs. They said, okay, if we cannot have an agenda, or, or we cannot match their numbers, let us go to you know, immoral ways by whipping sentiments against communities. That is totally disgusting, and I think uh, uh, Mr. Bojan has led uh, many people down. Uh, we never thought that he will be the person who will say these kind of things. Because even if, and, and again, it tells you, and you know, it makes people to nearly believe, you know, without, without any condemnation from the MPP, it makes people believe that this is exactly the, way the, the reflection in, 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 in their minds. Because the president would have re reacted. He okay. was the last speaker. That is, that is why when, yeah. when Uso Nodabo, when I think the former attorney general under the Jamesh regime addressed a rally in CRR, you know, supposedly making himself a UDP sympathizer, a lot yeah. of people condemned Baba UDP did yes. Yes, for allowing him to mount the Rostom in their platform. Yeah. And it was really good for the party leadership to come and say that was an error. Yeah. I would have expected MPP leadership should have said, oh, now I think our national president made an error. This is not our policy. This is not never you know, our way of doing things. Uh, this is an unfortunate comment about which we are sorry. But what did we see? We see that he's even been commended yeah. online mm -hmm. uh, by people uh, coming from the NPP. I think this is unacceptable, completely unacceptable. When, uh, when, when he, is it Yamseka or so, sorry, of the GD, uh, of the UDP was quoted along those lines in Salikeyo's body, was saying that uh, you know uh, Uzebeda was a Mandinka and you should support him. He was, he was, she was condemned. Everybody said, look, you have gone offline. You yeah. cannot be talking like that. And similarly, I think the Mugoyang really missed away. And he's so disappointed he shouldn't have said that. Um, yes, it's, it's distasteful. He should be condemned and all of that. Um, um, we cannot emphasize how dangerous um, some of, some of, we can't overemphasize how dangerous these comments can be. And I think um, there are two major issues that we need to understand when it comes to things like this. We've been sitting here talking about race for the State House. And as Essa said earlier, this election, we're trying to consolidate our democracy. And in that consolidation, we are talking about moving our politics forward. We've mentioned here over and over again, mm -hmm. I think Fatih does a good job at that, outlining how this country is crumbling yeah. in every sector, right? Um, we know that the health sector is failing, infrastructure, you name it. So I was think we were, we always said here, this is the election or the campaign where we were wishing that um, campaign, the political parties will, will focus on issues, issues that they would address. Mm -hmm. And then we've said here it's been relatively good compa co comparing it to previous years until we get to a point like this where we, we, we should bear in mind the, the silent majority. We, we, here we, we focus a lot on crowd politics. We see that MPP and UDP pool a lot of, a lot of crowd. But we have a lot of undecided voters in this country. We have like um, 900,000 voters. Oh, they don't pull up to 100,000. So, yes. So, you would see that people are sitting at home because all of them have a lot of work to do. Mm -hmm. They all have a lot of work to do. They, you can, you can, they're flawed in so many ways. Mm -hmm. So, people right now are voting just for the better candidate, someone they think that could, and you have some who are undecided. So statements like this, like when Dembo Bojan makes statements like this to attack an ethnic group, what it sometimes does is that it pulls those undecided voters don't focus on issues anymore. They just focus based on their ethnic <coughs> alignment. So all those people, because that's a very dangerous misinformation this information to say that a certain group, um, we know it's not true. Where are they going back to after all? Like, who is Gambian in mm -hmm. the first place? That's another question to answer. But then these things are like intimidation. With, um, um, they, they're intimidation where people now, they will not be driven by policies. They will not vote, um, they will not do issue voting as ESA. And that's very dangerous. That is in no way consolidating our democracy. 
Once he made that statement, some people are just going to vote just because they want to be safe in this country yeah. because Dembo Boyang has said it. That. Not just because someone said, I'm going to do this for the country. They just want to vote for their security. And another thing is, and I think I've said this here before, is statements like this are very, very serious when it comes to post-election period. Mm -hmm. We have been talking about relatively peaceful campaign, but the electoral process does not stop, stop now. It. it doesn't stop on the 4th of December. Mm -hmm. The most critical part comes 5th December going forward. We know these two parties, NPP, UDP, are very confident mm -hmm. based on what the crowds that they're seeing. And then the militants, most of these militants don't know what the manifestos hold. They don't know what drives the agendas. They just see the colors in the streets. They just see the crowds, and they believe that what they've won. So once, obviously, we're going to say one winner, right? Yeah. That's already there. Questioning the IEC and all of that is already there. But you make a statement like this. Maybe Dembo Bojang, when, when people come out and attack him, he can come out and say, well, it was just a mistake. But that is not enough yeah. in a post-electoral pro, uh, process. Because people have taken this, and they've run with it. Yeah. It is in the back of their minds. And we've said that post-election conflict is not only about war. It is about intimidation. It is about um, harassment. It's about sometimes even the psychological intimidation that people get. So once the UDP, if the UDP wins, people will feel insecure in this country. And if the NPP wins, because that's where he made the statement, mm -hmm. UDP um, supporters would also feel insecure because they feel that this is, because he did it at the platform of the NPP, this is the party's connotation about us. The incumbent, this is what they feel about us. So even if they don't do it as a party, said it here, the neighbors sitting next door to each other, the different tribes that are living with each other, they've taken this, right? And this is how they feel about others who are non-UDP supporters or who um, um, belong to other ethnic groups in this country. So when statements like this are made, it is very dangerous and they're very detrimental to the relative campaign that we, we've had. I'm hoping that it does not ignite anything. But we really, really have to be careful. And I think uh, it, it, it depends on us, every individual, to try to, because there are a lot of things about um, social cultural things in this country where people need to unlearn about. Yeah. Right? We need to unlearn about a lot of things. There's nothing more beautiful than cultural identification. There's nothing more beautiful than um, holding your pri uh, pride in your, in your ethnicity or your tribe or whatever you want to call it. But then there's something about this country, the peaceful nature that we've had where we see ourselves as Gambians, right, in, when it comes to the Gambia. We don't have any quite Mandinka, just a Mandinka family in this country or a fuller family. We are all interconnected one way or the other. So if people make certain statements like this, they are making very dangerous um, statements that could not just affect just the race for the state house, but very deep-rooted or grassroots relationships in this country. And they have to be condemned in every way. And we continue reassuring the electorate of this country that this country has gone beyond yeah. that. Um, sorry if I'm going just on and on. Yeah. Election is an emotional process. Mm -hmm. It is sentiments would be involved um, once in a while, but then we have to keep reassuring each other. And when statements like this are made, we have to stand and try to counteract them immediately. And the president had the opportunity to do that. The fact that he did not do that at that very instant says a lot, and it's very, very worrying. Two things for me, the post-electoral um, um, period of this country and the kind of voters, very vital voters, that it has swayed away from either voting for the UDP or for the MPP MVP. itself. Yeah. Abdullah, you know, President Barrow um, one time said, Nakate um, follow Gambian or Lensinde, but a number of election or Kela not do whole of And he's the incumbent. Um, he's claimed he's done more, more work than Dora and Barrow and President Jane combined. That's what he said. If the NPP believes 
they have done so much. Why are they going so personal? Uh, today, we saw the remarks against SFR going very personal, mm -hmm. revealing his salary. And we can confirm that that is not SFR's salary anyway. Uh, but also, going to the land of uh, sharing personal conversations with ESA, but also having his presidential advisor making such hateful statements on his campaign. Really, why can the M why do you think the MPP is not talking about what they have done for this country, but going so personal? First, it was the APRC, it was UDP, and then to the APRC and JAMI, and now ESA file, and then this um, hate speech. And it's the incumbent. And even the, the IEC, we have seen the, the president supporters going after the IEC. Mm -hmm. um, they promised they were going to have, they tried to have a, 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 a rally today, or a, a, a protest. Permit. A permit was denied. Mm -hmm. All of these things we are saying is from the NPP camp. Why do you think the president's camp is acting this way? Um, I, I think because all the previous speakers alluded to this point. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's because when you have ideas, when you have policies and programs, then you'll focus on your programs and policies and less on personality politics. But when your, 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 your whole campaign process is devoid of ideas and policies, then you have to resort to, to where your ability actually lies. And the ability of the NPP or the ability of Barrow would lie in, in terms of scaremongering in terms of um, damaging the, the reputation of, of, um, of the other candidates. Um, yes, there has been some projects. We've seen some um, road works um, in, in the URR and stuff like it, but some, there are people saying that these are some of these were signed during the agenda uh, time, you know, so, so <laughs> you know, he was simply just Im implementing. Uh, there's, there's been some, 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 some progress. For example, the Gambianization of the judiciary. Okay, mm -hmm. we have more Gambian judges, um, Gambian chief justice, and the judiciary been been free Same. and fair. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. You just have to look at. So, and and there has been certain projects that perhaps Barrow can say whether this was in the Ajemma time or his administration. But I would have ordinarily expected for him to come out and and discuss some of those issues to say, for example, Gambians yearn for an independent, neutral judiciary. And you've got that in my administration, something like that. Um, but, but that hasn't happened. So what has happened of late is just, well, attack on the UDP perhaps because of the, um, the split in town. So you look at the, the, the prior history, uh, but all coming from the UDP. Uh, but in terms of um, the, the attack last night um, on, on, on SRFAL is because SRFAL has managed successfully to deplete borough support significantly. Mm -hmm. So what can you do about it now? The only way you can, you can do something is to just go on, uh, because you cannot come out and say he's not competent. Mm. Yeah. Okay, you cannot come out and say he's doing this for money. You cannot come back, come to the government and say he's not good at, at what he's doing. So you cannot say any of those kind of stuff. So the only thing you can come out now is just to, to try and, 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 and resort to innuendo, stuff that will that may appeal uh, to Gambian people. So I was really aghast at, um, at the president. He's the head of state. Gambians and foreigners go and sit with the president to discuss issues. Some of these issues are, are private. Some of these things are, are but private in public nature. Uh, but he said himself that SR when they are to, he said, SR has um, a, a private company, but I'm sure we all know that we see his car and the, and the things. So he said himself that he went there for for land to build and, and state that that happens. All government, you know, private businesses do that. do that. But I don't think it is appropriate for for our president to come out uh, and 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 reveal the nature of that private conversation. That is completely wrong. Mm -hmm. uh, secondly, um, like you said, I am also privy mm -hmm. uh, to information yeah. that, that the salary, he said, is utterly wrong and it's false. Not, so yeah. Baro is simply lying <laughs> to the Gambian it's people. Not it's not 500,000. It's not 500,000. No. Uh, but, but, but you even have to, you, you even have to go, to go. But, but the issue is, in our Gambian culture, um, obviously, if SR's salary was revealed to the Gambian people, by Gambian people, because he was doing a public job, 
Mm -hmm. Okay, so so this is your secrecy. I'm not, I don't even buy it. So so you know uh, you know, but not from Barrow. But if, if for example the CSO said we want to look at what he did at TRRC, and we want to investigate how much is that is completely fine because. Because there should not be any secrecy in relation to these things. You carry out a public function, so there's not be any secrecy. So I get that. Mm -hmm. but, but that wasn't done in any good faith mm -hmm. when he said that. It was yeah. simply done just to say, this guy was paid half a, 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 a billion mm -hmm. or a million mm -hmm. dollars yeah, every month. And he, and he said so many things that, um, that as I fall, abandoned. Uh, witnesses. Um, I, I don't want victims, to uh, uh, victims. Uh, I don't want them to, as a political. I, I, I don't want to, to get into um, into uh, some of the specifics here. But but I had the privilege yeah. of working with SFL at the TRRC mm. uh, very closely, very very closely. At the I, I went to TRRC as as consultant, mm. um, and I can tell Mr. Barrow and the Gambian people mm. that. In June, in May, June, and July this year, and even August, particularly in June, July, August, mm -hmm. then when I leave my house at 6 in the morning, or half past 6 in the morning, I go to TRRC, I uh, arrive at TRRC at, at 7 o'clock, sometimes half 6, I am there until 2 o'clock in the morning. Mm -hmm. But that's not about me. Mm -hmm. When I leave at 2 a.m., mm -hmm. I leave SFL there, and that's happened throughout those periods. Mm -hmm. Sometimes at midnight, I am exhausted. Okay, I want to go home because I cannot even read and, and write anymore. Yeah, I come out and I see his car. And I'm thinking he's, you know, he's, he's way older than me. So I cannot be complaining of exhaustion, you know. So, uh, so I go back to my office. I come back at 1 o'clock, his car is there. So sometimes at 2 o'clock, I'll simply go, or he'll come to my office sometimes and say to, you, and say to me, and I'll say to him, I'll do it too. At 2 o'clock, I'll go to him. But, but not only me, myself, Maria Masingate, Hadidande, and Sagar, we will go normally. We will leave at 2 o'clock. When I come back at 7 and a half, 7, 8 o'clock the following day, and I'll ask the guards, um, when did SR leave? They, tell me, they will tell me um, he was here until half 5 o'clock, half past 5. And he did that almost seven days a week, so many times. In my conversation with his wife, mm. she told me as well that when he leaves at half past 5, he'll go home, he wouldn't climb up. He will remain downstairs working on his computer. So she will literally now force him, yeah, like just come on. So seven o'clock or so he'll go and sleep for because nine o'clock half past nine he's back in the office. Yeah. So so when you tell me that person and remember this is somebody who is significantly successful yeah. at the highest level Absolutely. at the ICC, yeah. both financially yeah. and in terms of as 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 lawyer. In his office there's not even a fridge. It's just a barren office on his own. Mm -hmm. Um, working from 9 a.m. until half past, sometimes around 11 o'clock or 10, he'll go home just to go on sour and come back quickly. Mm. He doesn't even eat. Sometimes Mariamo or Hadidande are eating their sandwich. <coughs> he will come and take a bite mm. or coffee, and then he'll be like that until. So when we leave at 1 or 2, he's there. You know, sometimes I remember one day I was leaving the TRRC around, he went around 10, 11, he said, I'm coming back. I, I, I was there until around after one quarter past one. I said, I think my man is tired. He's not coming back. So I decided. So at the entrance of the TRRC, you know, he, the other way, he, you know, and I saw his car. So I turned and went inside. And he said to me, I'm just coming back now. And I said to him, well, I, I, I'm, go, I'm going home. So, so when I return in the morning, because I normally I, I come very early, and I ask these guys, and they tell me uh, he was here until 4 o'clock, half or 5. So, so when somebody does that, mm. and, and for the Gambian people, you know clearly, that this is somebody that cares uh, for the victim, this cares about this country, and that is why he spends all the time on his own. Um, and, 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 you know, because of, 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 of my work there as well. And this is somebody who, who was fair as well. You know, I can tell you sometimes I will come to him and I say, um, I think we can make a case, X, Y, Z, against Jame on this. And he will look at it and say, I disagree. Or, or tell me why you think this is your position mm -hmm. in law, and you would do that. And you come and say, I disagree. Yes. Um, so, so I can tell you as well, his job wasn't there to, to persecute. Whatever he did was simply <coughs> based on facts and the law uh, surrounding those circumstances. But, but coming back to, to the statement of Dembo, uh, Dembo by force uh, mm -hmm. the other day, mm -hmm. there are two elements to this. One, mm -hmm. threat to our national security and threat to our mutual social cohesion and, and coexistence. If you look at some of these driving forces for, for uh, conflicts, politics are very emotional exercises. So if you look at post-election violence in Kenya, 
the lowest and the KKU and the rest of it. It's based on these things, regionalism and, and, and ethnic. Uh, if you look at the, the, the conflict in Rwanda, if you look at even in the, in the Serbs and the Croats and the, and the Bosnians, you know, people who live together like we do here. But because of politics, um, disintegrate the entire, the entire Balkans. But, but what happens now is um, when he makes statements like that, uh, and I think that is why it is utterly, utterly dangerous because, because these are so personal and sentimental, they don't go away, they don't evaporate, they, they remain within our psyche. So it just takes one thing, it's just like my, just one spark for, for the country to be in flames. So I, I, it's not unfortunate, this is deliberate, okay? So what happened, if you, look, if you remember this, the meeting when, when they invited the Fullers at the State House, and Hamad Ba yeah. made a comment. So if you look at this, you know that this is a deliberate NPP pursuit agenda. Okay, it's a policy, it's systematic. It's not a mistake, and it's not ad hoc or anecdotal. It is deliberately pursued policy by the NPP. So saying now, it's, I've split with the UDP, um, you know, the psyche that maybe it's a, it's a Maninka party or whatever, or the majority of the Maninka, Badibu, Injaras, and the Kings will, will, will support. And therefore, what I'm going to do now is I'll get the Wolofs and the Fullers and the other um, ethnic minorities to, 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 to rally behind me and, and do exactly what they made in 2016 and previous years. So, so, so what Dembo Bifos did, he spoke for on behalf of President, President Barrow. What did Barrow do as the last speaker? He could have come and pacified those really dangerous rhetoric and utterances, but he didn't. So that means he was in complete agreement mm -hmm. with, and I expect the, uh, I was going to write to the uh, Attorney General and the IGP mm -hmm. to prosecute mm -hmm. this guy, because I think we can find in our law books what he said is really criminal, and I think he ought to be prosecuted. Mm -hmm. well, I, you could not have said it any better. Um, I, I, I don't know if I have to say anything. Anything, more, yeah, I mean, after this. Yeah, I think that's said everything. I mean, um, just like Abdullah said, and I agree with him fully, I think um, when I heard this statement, the first thing that came to mind was, I mean, Dembo spoke on behalf of President Barrow and his cabal. You know, exactly what is in their mind. Probably these are things that they discuss at their personal level, and Dembo couldn't just, you know, control his emotions, and then he just came and said it. But uh, like Halima said, um, you know, ethnicity, you see, one of the obstacles to democratic consolidation, as highlighted by scholars, has to do with, you know, the issue of um, ethnic mobilization. You know, in order for Africa to consolidate democratic needs, uh, including the Gambia, we must be able to unleash ethnic mobilization. Because in ethnic mobilization, politics, you know, um, surrounded by ethnic mobilization, you tend to have, I mean, one party winning is considered a defeat for another party. And I think um, this is something that has been happening in the Gambia. I mean, although it has not to this magnitude, but then looking at the 2016 election, mm -hmm. we saw what the Ajame did. Um, that was uh, politically suicidal, you know, attacking the, the Mandinka tribe. And that was, that was bad for him. And I think um, Dembo Bifos, if I'm to tell President Barrow, you know, I think Dembo has just destroyed him um, just, you know, a few days before election. And if, if he should do, lose this election, he should go after Dembo by force, <laughs> in, my, in my view. Um, it's, it's really, really disappointing um, to see such a man, like you said, who did a lot in 2016, getting the coalition, coming to this state just to destroy yourself. Um, as an elderly a senior citizen who is a religious advisor to the president, who is expected to be an epitome of unity, um, especially for the young ones, uh, someone that everybody can look up to. Having to come this low to you know make a, such a such a derogatory remark against the Mandinka ethnic group, I think it's really unfortunate, and it's something that um 2021 we these are things that Gambians should not have been discussing. Like Cham said, yeah. you know we should have we should have passed this stage. But that's why I always tell Gambians, I always tell people who think that Gambians have matured to that level politically. I think we are. We are making a big mistake. Um, you still have a lot of people out there yeah. who think along this line. Mm -hmm. I have to share a personal experience here. Just yesterday, <coughs> you know, someone, you know, shared um, a personal conversation with it, with me to say, um, you know, who do you support? I said, you know, yeah, jokingly, I said anybody to remove the incumbent, <coughs> and then she was like, you know, um, but not UDP though. I said, why not UDP? And she was like, I don't relate with UDP. I said, why don't you relate with them? And all she said was like, you know, UDP, they're aggressive, they don't have policies, that and that and that, and majority are Mandinkas. I said, this is the problem in this country. And imagine this is an educated person, a so-called educated person with a master's degree, 
So it's, it's really sad and worrying that we have such people who we think as the young people, as educated young folks out there, should be able to redirect this country, should be able to counter this narrative, to change the narrative. But these are the very people that are spreading this. These are the very people that, are, that, are, that have still these ideas in them that look, one, you know, a victory for one group is seen as a defeat for another. I, I, I always tell people that, um, specifically if you tell me that um, there will be revenge in this country, there will be this. I said, you see, 2016 was an opportunity if there was going to be any revenge. Yeah. Because then the wounds were just fresh. Mm -hmm. Everybody can just wake up and just attack anyone. Mm -hmm. But then <coughs> Gambians are, I always say, naturally we are friendly. Yeah. Do you understand? When Jame considered defeat we on December 2nd, I had people saying that, look, let's forgive it. Him. Do you okay. understand? So yeah. who in this country, you see, if you look at the way we are interconnected in this country, if Dembo tells me that if UDP wins, Fulas will go away. Well, Let me give him an example. Mm -hmm. My brother married a Wolof. Now, if UDP wins and you say Wolofs will go, will I allow my brother's wife with the kids or the parents to leave this country? That's actually very far. Yeah. That Dabo's <coughs> wife is Wolof. Yeah, exactly. His second wife is Jola. So we'll, we'll is Dabo he going to send all his wives away? <laughs> exactly. So if my <laughs> sister, <laughs> one of my sisters <laughs> is also married to a Wolof. Yeah. My other sister is married to a Fula. And they have kids. If Fulas are all living the Gambia, Wolofs are all living the Gambia, Jolas are all living the Gambia, my niece and nephews will leave the Gambia? And the question is where to? Like, where to? Like, where to? Where, what, what I think, so, I think basically, I, these yeah. are so, desperate measures. Oh, yeah. Yeah. To be honest with you, the NPP at this level, mm -hmm. I'm not predicting anything. I only want to predict. Well, you, we're but, going to predict but the NPP is just yeah. desperate. Uh -huh. This is the last ditch, and it feels like, you know, we just have to go in for this. Do you understand? But like Abdullah said, this is systematic. Mm -hmm. It's not something that is by mistake. It's deliberate. It's deliberate. Dembo spoke on behalf of those people out there. Yeah. And funnily, funnily, somebody is setting this country on fire and people were there clapping. Mm -hmm. When Jami insulted the money because people were clapping. Yeah. And he paid the price by a shocking electoral defeat. And now it is also a lesson for Barrow to be mindful that December 4th, on Saturday, he can be shocked just with this statement. I've interacted with people since yesterday. I'm telling you that there are people who are so upset about this thing. They've never been UDP, but they feel that their identity is attacked. You see, identity is very sensitive. Yeah. There are three things that are very sensitive to every human being. And when you touch them, no matter how nice the person is, they will just react. And when they react, they overreact. Religion, race, and tribe. Okay? The problem that is happening in this world today, America, Europe, and other parts of the world, is racism. You go to the Arab world, this terrorism is religion. Mm -hmm. You come to Africa, in South Sudan, in you know, right. Kenya, in other places, it's pride. Yeah. Do you understand? So these are very sensitive. One can change his or her religion, but you can never change your tribe. Yeah. These are very sensitive to every human being. Mm -hmm. So if you attack them, expect me to react. Expect me to retaliate. Because they are very dear to every human being. Do you understand? So politicians use this as a tactic because they consider elections as avenues for you know, ele um, ele how do you call it, ethnic, ethnic Ethn census, census, to see which ethnic group has the highest. And when these things happen, sometimes they can backfire, mm -hmm. especially if you attack the majority. I would say that Gambians are peaceful in the sense that Gambia is the only country where you will attack a majority and everybody goes to peace, yeah. to, to bed in peace. Mm -hmm. In other countries, there will have been something else. And I always tell people, I don't want to be pessimistic, and I, always, I don't want people to see like I'm sounding so crazy. But you see, you see violence, Violence has different sources. Yeah. There are different sources to conflict. Some of these things can be deep-rooted. Mm -hmm. And when they are not addressed, they create structural problems in society. Yeah. And they can ultimately lead to violence. So Gambians should not sit and say, oh, people have prayed for this country. We will never have violence in this okay. country. We will never have conflict in this country. Sierra Leoneans before 1991 were never thinking that they would go into civil war. Liberians never thought before 1989 that they would go, ever go into civil war. We are not better than countries that experience civil war. If we don't address these things, we'll be in trouble. And sadly, disappointingly, the stakeholders in this election, you said this, the code of conduct, mm -hmm. clearly one of the elements, code of conduct, then move by force has violated this, and President Barrow appended his signature to that code of conduct. Yeah. He should have, therefore, he should have condemned this. And finally, what happened at that, at that meeting was, when the Bakao Alcalo was talking, trying to talk about peace and all that. They dragged him away. They dragged him away. Yep. Showing that what this man was saying is not what they're interested, interested in. in. What they're interested in is what Dembo will come, making divisive statements. And that is why I said there are two reasons why Gambians should ask themselves whether they should vote for President Barrow or not. 
One, we have security threat in this country. One has to do with internal, which is the division that he is creating. He's a very divisive leader, dangerous for the stability of this country. The second one has to do exter with external. That is having foreign troops, especially Senegalese, having access to our state house, mm -hmm. having access to every detail of our security. Mm -hmm. This is detrimental to the peace and stability of this country. So we must, we must be able to, civil society, I expected, civil society uh, to, to come out and outrightly condemn, condemn this state, some yeah. of these things. Because yeah. mm -hmm. you have to look at the time. You see, whenever they make reference to the past, yeah. we always say that, like you said, Ajiam Seka made similar statement. Even Dabo made similar statement, not mm -hmm. to this extent. But you look at Dembo's statement and the timing also, the context in which it was said, yeah. especially attacking a majority. Mm -hmm. This can create chaos in the country. But sadly, sadly, mm -hmm. stakeholders in the election are all quiet on this. Yeah. In Africa, I always say, we are always reactive rather than being proactive. Mm -hmm. And these are early warnings. Today we will sit here, tomorrow, like I said, elections are emotional moments, yeah. emotional processes. When post-election, we look at the peaceful nature of elections pre, and during, and post. Mm -hmm. Post-election, when one happens to win, the other will feel like, look, we are threatened. Especially Dembo saying this, they can be like, this is exactly what NPP wants to do if they come to power. Yeah. Even though they may not be able to do it because Gambians will resist such. But Civil society, I expect, stakeholders in this election who are really in, interested in peaceful elections will have come up and condemned this. Yep. But I think I've only seen peace ambassadors peace the Gambia yep. who made a statement. All the civil society groups Oops. are quiet. Yeah. And on one page, in fact, I raised this issue there. Yeah. This was said on Monday. I raised the issue there on Tuesday. It was only three people who responded to me, including yeah. Mari Javati. The rest are all quiet. Be it one be it civil society. I'm not attacking them, yeah. but I'm telling them that here is an early warning. Yeah. That everybody, every stakeholder who is interested in peaceful election must stand to condemn such and make sure that President Barrow and all other candidates abide by the code of conduct that they have signed. All the civil society were present when this code of conduct was signed. Mm -hmm. And that is why SFR raised this issue. He said it is one thing to sign this, yep. but another to monitor. And you know, you know, it's good that we have a monitoring. Imagine, do you know that we have a monitoring team for this code of conduct? Former Speaker Elizabeth Renner is leading the chairing that, that could uh, monitoring team to monitor this code of conduct to make sure that candidates abide by them. But now them will make this statement. We also expect, I'm not, I, I don't want to, I don't know whether they will make a statement, yeah. but NHRC yes. Yes. is also to make a statement on this. Mm -hmm. Because we have seen President Barrow make a statement, you know, um, using gas, tear gas, whatever, that he used on the protesters. And Dabo also saying that we will destroy you. NHRC had to come out and make a statement. Do you understand? I was to reliably, reliably informed that the president was not happy with that statement. So I don't know whether they're also going to make a statement on this or not. For NPP, I'm not surprised. I must say that I'm disappointed, but I'm not surprised that they did not come out to make a statement because it shows that this is something that they endorse. Officially, I will say. Because if they don't endorse this, they should have rejected this. But for Barrow, I wouldn't blame him. You have to look at the type of human being you're also dealing with. So I don't expect him to come and condemn such a statement. Mm -hmm. Now, going forward, Cham, yeah. what, uh, what also was uh, manifested during the campaign was that all of the candidates coming back. We saw the crowd competition. Um, but I think UDP came, NPP came, Halifa Sala, um, NUP, ESA, everyone came, Mama Kande. Some stayed until 5 a.m., 7 a.m. Mm -hmm. People tried to even delay their convoys just to make sure they arrived. They said, I arrived late. But what we saw is the UDP leader withdrawing from the campaign trail mm -hmm. um, because he was injured and uh, he's at home. Mm -hmm. Do you think his withdrawal will affect the UDP campaign? How effective is the campaign going to be without yeah, doubt? I mean, I mean, uh, you know, he's been away for a week. Okay. How well, impactful I, will that be? Uh, well, let me go back to the nature of these campaigns, mm -hmm. the, this crowd factor you're talking about. Yeah. And I agree with the previous analyst on this matter. You see, if you combine Esa Fal, Adam Baro, Useno Dabo, Mama Kande, uh, Ablai Jamme, and Halifa Salas mobile crowd, and mm -hmm. I mean the crowds you see them with, yeah. even if you put them all together, they will not even amount to 90,000 people. <laughs> no, not even. Sure. So 800,000 people are sitting at home. Yeah. They don't join any convoy, they don't uh, go to any campaign, they're sitting at home. Mm -hmm. So eventually, no matter how many people you have, uh, you know, in your meeting, know that the people sitting home are 10 times more than the crowds who are with you. 
Mm -hmm. So I think what is important uh, at the end of the day is not how much crowd I pull or can so on Facebook, but my messaging. Yeah. How effective is my messaging and how well understood is my messaging among the electorates. Yeah. And I think I will commend DOI mm -hmm. uh, because they, they are so consistent and persistent that they, you know, they, they are either uh, you know, repeating you know, <laughs> all arguments mm -hmm. or, or let's say boring you with new ones. Mm -hmm. And you know, in any case, you don't miss the message that, look, these people's message is that we have to stand by ourselves to be able to develop our own country. In fact, they, they struggle even to name their political opponent. Name. They, they struggle even to name yeah. their political the name of their political opponent. They struggle. Yeah. Because they base it so on so such issues that they hardly mention opponent's name. But how effective is that now, though? Now, they, they, they will say they will talk they will attack opponents' policies. Okay. And bring up their and so how superior theirs is to that. They hardly mention. Like I I will I would I will, I will give an example. Uh, to, today we ran a story on Syria Jata. Mm -hmm. He said, don't, al can Allah na follow the politician or the men buka wasa, men mm. Yeah. All right. You now, know that is directed to somebody. Well, you know, <laughs> no, no, you know that. I assume. And, and, and yeah. you, know, you know that yeah. for the past five years, the only group of people who have entrusted our, our, mm -hmm. our monies to are the President Barrow and his team. Yeah. So he doesn't necessarily have to name President Barrow. Yeah. But everybody knows that he is criticizing the government's policy. Mm -hmm. That is beautiful because, you know, you know he, he is trying to uh, put people's mind on issues rather than personalities. That is true. Mm -hmm. See, I did not see much of... Uh, Jame. No, mm -hmm. much of MUP. That's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. Yes. And it's that is, that is, even and is very, 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 very... Surprising. Surprising. Because I would have thought that somebody who is looking for the hearts and minds of people will be readily available mm -hmm. yeah. for, you know, for, to the media. Mm -hmm. But I have seen that even to get access to them yeah, was bureaucratic. Yeah. So I just don't know. And, you know, and they had very brilliant ideas. Very good the, few, ideas. The, few times, you know, the few times I come on their messaging, they have very brilliant ideas. Mm -hmm. In fact, not long ago, I had, you know what they said? They said, okay, you know what? You may not know us, but one thing is clear. Choose between the five opposition parties. Don't just vote for Barrow. You know, just vote for any other person other than Barrow. And you said that? And you said that. Yeah. That's amazing. They, they wow. said that. Well, of course they went ahead to say why they are better than that five, <laughs> obviously. <Yeah. laughs> but then they said, in the worst scenario, don't vote for <laughs> Barrow. At least vote for any of us. At least, uh, I mean, that's commendable. That's yeah. that's that's what you expect from an opposition party to say that. But not much had been Hard really uh, heard from them. Uh, you know, that is disappointing. I think they are outraged. Uh, they are not aggressive in their in their campaign. I don't know why. Don't you think also because they are newcomers? No, but we have newcomers that are. But, 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 but then of course, well. yeah. But then of course, what are, are the but yeah. even the media yeah. appearance, yeah. 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 media appearance, you yeah. cannot get access. Yeah, yeah. 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 there is there is this unusual or you know or, you know difficulties in accessing access them. Access, yeah. Even media. That that is it's that is that is unfortunate. I can't. I, I just surprising. I don't know why. I don't know why. But equally also, exactly. They didn't need any resources. But equally also, if you listen to them, you 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 you. You, you see quality, yes, and you see very, you know, very huge substance in, in what they are saying and the, and the policies there. Only that they do not aggressively push this, you know, to the attention of the people. I don't know what's responsible for that. That, that is unfortunate. Um, for 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 Mama Kande, well, you know, I followed the uh, campaign uh, rather, and there have been a lot of controversy um, surrounding, for example, the involvement of uh, former president uh, Jame, I think it is unfortunate that as one as human rights uh, worker said uh, two weeks ago that uh, with all what happened in this country people are considering Jame as a possible kingmaker. Yes. That is unfortunate. And Jammeh he's ruling crowds for Jammeh Jammeh should not even have been a, you know relevant. a topic for discussion. Mm. Relevant in this, in this thing. But you see this is what this is what I told you about politicians. Yeah. 
they will abandon their principles. They will stoop low just because they want to be elected. And that is this kind of thing that's responsible for uh, them by force statements. The same thing goes for Mama Kande and even President Jame, uh, President Barrow. Because the thing is, if it were not for desperation, why would you reach out to the APRC? Yeah. Against whom you fought for 20 years. Some of your party leaderships were incarcerated, even murdered by, that, by, by the group of that party. Why are you reaching out to them? In the name of reconciliation, when those who have been victimized, you never bothered even to go to check on their fate. So you cannot convince me that you are looking for reconciliation in that. You are looking for votes. But what do, what what do, whatever cost. What do we should be happy about, though? For no, the first, time, I'm, I'm for the first time, President Barrow is admitting that he is the face of the TRRC. I'm I'm and he's for the victims. I'm coming for He I'm, said that I'm yesterday. Com you, know what so, happened? you know what happened? Yeah. What happened was, you know, because of his political interest, mm -hmm. You know, what he should have done in the first place, he is now doing. trying, showing that he would probably be willing to do that, but not for sincere reasons, for his own political interest. That is the, that is the problem with politicians. They share this, this is, this is common among them. They will go for their political interest. Don't see any scent among them. Very few of them are sent. All of them will violate and bend principles just for the next the coming elections. So they, they are like that. Okay, I, Mama can, uh, for, for Jammy, I think it's unfortunate yeah. uh, that Jammy should be involved in the politics. We should not have, you know, got give, given Jammy any relevance mm -hmm. whatsoever in Gambian matter because all these problems you are talking about were caused by Jammy. See, that is why the coalition, the people who drafted the coalition program, which included Hypersal and others, we are very, very well meaning to the Gambian people. They know that we are coming out from um, a dictatorship. When you come out from a dictatorship, you inherit naturally a polarized, divided society. You need a statesman who will lead and reconcile everybody and do and undo all the bad things and step out, leaving a clean, level playing field. That's what they envisage. And that is what Mr. Burrow has spoiled. That is why today we are more polarized and divided than before. Now, look at what happened when he launched his political ambition. One, we, okay, we were divided, but obviously in 2016, you could say the division was one big side against the other. a smaller side. Mm -hmm. That is the people in the coalition who disagreed with the APRC of Germany. When he launched his political ambition, and you know, people will say this, forget about this, uh, uh, to adult that he has an interest to go. You have an interest to go, but you look at the greater interest of the country. Okay, when he launched his political ambition, one, the UDP was split. Yeah, that's right, that's his party. Yeah. I could say the coalition, you know, but the UDP was split. Was split yeah. Everyone expected the coalition to go their own way. Anyway, but at least the UDP, we thought perhaps that will remain intact. But when he launched his political ambition, the UDP split. Now even APR is split. Yes. And, and that is thanks to his political ambition. If he had remained a transitional government and president, we would have reconciled all these anti-tribal sentiments that have existed on the Jammy would have all been dosed down. Because you know, these things started on the Jammy. Jammy caused all these problems. On the Jawara, we never had this tribal field, not, not to this level. Jawara managed the diverse people of the Gambia so well that in fact, the, the majority of the people where he hailed from, where even, you could have said, they were the people complaining more. Mm -hmm. They were integrated the society so much so that you, I mean, you, you, you just cannot imagine, you know, how he was able to do that. It was when Jammeh came, because of his political interest, his selfish interest, he divided the people, you know, he poisoned the opinion of the minority tribes against the Mandinkos. And unfortunately, the people's mind still continued to be poisoned with that kind of opinion. And now it's been celebrated by people like Dembo, Dembo by Force, who had a lot of experience in politics himself, who had been at the receiving end of such kind of stupid politics. But today, because he wants his party to be elected, he will stick to blow to those kind of politics so that he can go. It's unfortunate and terrible. And I think I should repeat that it should be condemned 
by the NPP. I remember, of course, when it happened towards the, the, the December 2016 elections, people said this is one factor that destroyed Jammer's campaign. Yeah. That may well be the case yeah. this time around, too. I mean, as I've told you, a lot of people are already expressing feelings that this is really attacking my ethnic group. But, is, but do we know the number of people that are also fearful about this statement? Because there are, there are people who already are looking at um, the UDP government like that. No, I will come in and I will tell those from people. I will tell those cement, people. Cement, I, will tell, that. I will tell those people. But yeah, let exactly. them have no fears. Mm -hmm. This is not true. Okay. It is just a misleading information so that they can get votes. Okay. It is not true. Let them not fear. The government people will not allow themselves to divide it. But it's a dangerous, it's, it's a very dangerous, and it's a recipe for disaster. It should not be condoned. I mean, like, like, like what, you know, Fatih and, uh, you know, Esa have said. You see, these, are, these kind of resentments are there. They will be there, you know, docile or dormant. They are waiting for small, one small thing to spark them. To spark it, yeah. So it's better they don't exist. Yeah. So people like Dembo should not act in this kind of manner. It's no. disappointing and it should be condemned. So Lamin spoke about Doi, uh, the, the, the Doi policy. Mm -hmm. Doi not basically attacking anybody, the, the dissent policy, talking about now Aranke, so now Fengo, now Mansakunda, talking about policies basically. Yeah. But how effective is the Doi message? I see online the new campaign, uh, yes, Halifa can win. Yeah. Because, you know, I think what Doi has been experiencing all this while, people say, ah, Jero Nusani, Doi, Doi, do you win? And I mean, I, I told somebody yesterday, Mane, so silently to Halifa. This is the Doi support who's saying, you know, Man Hamnani Barolai Sanil because Halifa do win. Mm -hmm. If you believe in Halifa, why yeah, are you I'm saying, saying that a statement like that? that? Exactly. Has Doi been able to manage? This, this has been the, the thing for Doi all these years. No. People that are really Doi supporters, but they still tell you, Halifa doing, ah, taking no, the UDP I, government, Mandaman Sanil Baro. This is what is happening now, and I see the campaign but, online. But before, yeah. I, I, before I cook out my sister in there, I think that is a very backward thinking. I mean, but that is what people... Because it's just like... You know, when they tell you here is a million dollars, see, and you say, oh, it's very nice, but it can wait for until, until maybe later. Well, Who will you see that? Who will do that? And that's what we are doing. I if you believe this man is the solution, yeah. yet you delay the decision to do it. In the I've, I've always said it is not the people I blame for that. It is the existence of backward retrotoxic political movements that cost DOI support. In 1994, mm -hmm. for example, yeah. DOI was growing as a progressive movement against the PPP regime. Mm -hmm. And I can bet that if you are a had not stage a coup d'etat, between DOI and PPP up to the 2000s, up to now, if, if PPP had uh, you know, survived, DOI would have been a very, very big mass movement. But Jammeh stopped their momentum and killed it when he entrenched himself to power and brought us back to this kind of politics I've been talking about. If today, mm -hmm. Baro and his NPP did not come out as they promised that they would, as he promised that he would not come out, yeah. Doi would have been a very, very big movement. In fact, bigger than most players today in the field. But did but you so, have so, chance so, so, it's not, so listen, it's not so much as people you know, not uh, wanting to elect them. Yeah. But I would say their message is often lost because of the distractions that you know, you know, these this, this, this backward movements. But know, then course, I think it is a very example. key political well, attribute for them to work on their messaging. Yeah. I mean, you're saying that if you're saying that the backward people are distracting people exactly. from Doi, yeah. I, but I think the responsibility lies on Doi yeah. to be able to work on their messaging, to 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 try to relate. Relatability is very important it's in, not, in it's political not easy. The deal is, is not easy to deal with a 
mass movement that thrive on misinformation, inducement, and all kind of things. It's difficult to deal with that. I think sometimes we don't give credit to Gambians <laughs> as yeah. well mm -hmm. when we say that they're easily distracted. Some people, when they can um, relate, I wouldn't say on the other trivial issues. I think I, we, we talked about this here last week about people not being able to you talked about a keyword, accessing the media, not accessing Ghana. Yeah. I think people cannot sort of access um, um, DOI. They need to work on the and the and the and need to evolve. No, on the DOI needs right? to evolve. No, I, I, I disagree. No, that is one thing. I disagree. No, 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 who can claim to be ignorant of this place? Let's have this. Let's go ahead. Go ahead. And then Namin saying that Foroya or the Doi, I think it's 46 pages, the, the manifesto, 40 something. Someone sent it to me. Even looking at that, excuse my, but they are, it's very archaic in some, of, in some of these things. For countries like, um, for socialism, because um, um, Halifa would stand, in, in, he did it at the debate, to, to, to refute, um, refute the fact that we are not a communist. We are not saying it's communism. It's different. Communism and socialism is there. But for socialism to work for a country like us would be almost impossible, right? And the, I think they, they should work on evolving on their policies and trying to align trying to align what works, reality, with what their, their, their agendas are. I think they need to be more realistic. I, I said it here before, they have a plan, and that is commendable. And they've stuck to it, but then the issue is with the plan. What, what, what are they trying to say? The system change that they're talking about. Nobody refutes the fact that this country needs system change, but how you go about it. And I even think some of them, um, in the debate, Mm -hmm. He showed some of the things here when there when he talked about um, the health sector having in every community. I think Essa's comeback there was very good. Having health facilities in every single um, community is not feasible. It's about accessibility. When we say accessibility, it does not necessarily mean having health sector um, health centers present. It's about how people can go to. Other, other places. And when you even talk about um, their development agendas, like I said it here, that you need to align yeah. some of the things. And when we say align, it's already the system we have in place, but the people. You are working with people. This, the country, this country is, the problem is not just with the institutions, but the mindset of the people as well. And I think that is where DOI tends to, um, I wouldn't say fail, but lag behind. Mm. compared to, if you're talking about, you said that if, if Jame hadn't stopped them in their tracks, they would have been one of the yes. key players. Absolutely. They would have been, but they've had the chance. Esafal is the newest, and Jame, mm. Esafal can, can hold an audience yeah. more than Jame. And that matters, though. I'm not saying crowd politics, but mm. uh, being able to hold an audience with people and how long you go about that instead of going for two hours. The average Gambian has, has lost um, concentration or has lost interest in things like that. You can make have some people stand there, even though SFR's manifesto is just like a, some, in some places copy and paste. I hope we'll get to that. But then you can have people talk on that more than they can, because all they say is but there is Arankeso, Arankeso, because no, that's I, what I, they I, think. <laughs> no, no, I agree no, that. Uh, no, I'm not saying that no, that I, is it. I'm I not agree. saying, but that is what people you say. Remember, that's when, what people when, say. yes, and when they said that, I think Jawara said, Ila Musuti, Ila Musuti. Okay, yeah. so going to come back from that alone, our, I, our, our parents' generation, that damaged them. I they agree. almost couldn't come back from that. And now, I'm just saying, I'm just saying here, yeah. and now we're seeing another trend. In our fathers and mothers' generation, it was that, yeah. to say that Ila Musute. In this generation, it is trying to tell people, Doi is not all about Aran Keso. Then if they continue with that rigidity, again, excuse my wordings here, in the next generation, if you, they continue like that, and I said it here, domestically, they're struggling with the messaging, with rel relatability, with trying to pull an audience. They say that they go door to door. 
which can be eff effective, but then once these jamborees come up, once these cards come up, some people tend to not to relate or get exactly. It's very cumbersome. It, they, their policies and all of that, I respect that they have policies. And, and I, I, if they get to win, we, many people will question. Um, they're talking okay. about system change. We might see a change in personality himself, because Gambia might change him a bit. Because working with institutions, sometimes you cannot come just and uproot systems. It's very different. So I think if Doi is willing to make certain compromises, and not to compromise on integrity, not to compromise on development, but then to evolve and also be realistic in some of their things. Um, so, and I, I wouldn't say Doi is not getting support. I would not give that to just because they've been distracted by others. That responsibility lies on Doi working on their messaging and the system they're trying to bring out internationally. I'm not saying we will not survive with socialism, but with a country like Gambia, we will really, really, really struggle um, as a socialist. So, Jan, before you come in, so, you know, I believe in 2016, the role Halifa played during the impasse propelled him. You know, somebody like me, you know, I had that belief, you know, Namuso, Nasubo. But 2016, my mindset about Halifa and Doi changed. Mm -hmm. And I think that was for so many people, the role he played. Yeah. No, I you know, the role he played in calming the, you know, people looked at him as that leader that, you know, we can trust when he tells us something that it is. But that momentum slipped away from them, mm -hmm. especially with the coming of CA and ESA. That's why now what we are seeing, even online, mm -hmm. the Doi people having a go at ESA all the time. Someone said to me, uh, you know, a Doi supporter said to me, ESA, I mean, no, 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 no. Yes, we see that a lot. We see that a lot. <laughs> even online. I'm not sure if you're online a lot, but we are seeing really well. a lot I, of I, ESA I, and uh, Doi supporters going at each other. Most of them believe ESA, because look, the Doi supporters are the elites. And ESA tend to take a lot of those people and see a kid. And you know, seeing Halifa and um, um, and Ismail Asisi on the debate stage, mm. you know, you know, they try to they tend to challenge him on some of these policies that everybody believes Halifa Moy Buhabi on all these things. And you see these young people going after him on some of these things. Even the, the debate with ESA too, I think it's it doesn't matter on the body. No, you know what? I really want to come No, you know, yes. Well, 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 because how we used to be called. Because the, yes. thing is, the thing is, um, a lot of people have said that, you know, that there could be a third force. Yeah. Toy, CA, ESA. And I've, I've always been surprised why people think that way. And now it is proven. Yeah. Because I've always argued that, look, who said DOI and CA have the same policy? Mm. You see, sometimes we're carried away by this, in quote, intellectualism. Yeah. People tend to associate themselves with DOI because they want to portray themselves as intellectuals. intellectuals yeah. People tend to associate themselves with Ismaila because he has a PhD. Mm -hmm. And then you think that, you know, obviously, you know, they are both educated. So, I mean, clearly it's stated mm -hmm. that, you know, DOI pursues that even though Halifa and Syria wouldn't want to admit this outright, but it's socialism, mm -hmm. you understand? They don't want to admit it. They don't like to admit it. <laughs> but it's socialism. Yes. While, you know, Ismaila uh, CA follows more of social democracy, mm -hmm. where you use um, capitalism to generate wealth and use socialism to distribute that wealth. Mm -hmm. I think the, problem, the difference here comes in terms of, um, they, might be, they might align in terms of values and principles. Mm -hmm. You know, when it comes to the issue of political co-optation, we have yeah. seen they refuse to do it. We yeah. have seen now CA saying that they are not endorsing anyone, yeah. they are going into alliance with anyone. Mm -hmm. But then in terms of policies, <clears throat> in terms of ideology or ideological orientation, in terms of policies and programs, we have seen how wealth is to be generated when they is talking more inward looking, looking at, you know, corporate economic system, you know, centralizing these things. You know, CA is talking about empowering the private sector, just the state playing a regulatory role. So it shows the fundamental difference between Alifa and, 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 and Doi yeah. and CA. Coming to SRFAL, we have seen it outright. It's yeah. like ESA is on the far right, while yeah. Doi is on the far left. Yeah. We're seeing him challenge Halifa on socialism, you know, that his ideas are more capitalism. That's what they believe in here and there. So the difference are there. But I think coming to Doi, I think also at some point people are unfair to Doi. Mm -hmm. 
Mm -hmm. um, I think they've been doing well since 1986. Um, just like Charm said, they've been destroyed at some point by Jawara and his style. But you see, the Aranqueso that people talk about, no country can develop without the Aranqueso. So yeah. they must talk about the Aranqueso. This is about the economy. Mm -hmm. Because they is more interested in alleviating the poverty of the people. Mm -hmm. And how do you alleviate the poverty of the people without looking at the economy? The economy must be strong. How do you generate that sovereign national wealth? I think this has been the focus. This has been the message. But it's the sad reality is that the political culture of the Gambia is very low. It's so parochial. Mm -hmm. So a lot of people wouldn't understand this. Yeah. The kind of politics that they are used to since Zawara time is the politics of Benachin, the politics of Sabar and mm -hmm. Tisar. That's what continue to Jame time. And that is what is continuing up to Baro's time. Mm -hmm. So the problem is not with Doi necessarily. Exactly. I think the message has been sent. Yeah. Yeah. So you see, when somebody does not want to receive something, Yeah, yes, that is what the message is, people are getting, getting. and that is not. And, and I'm telling you, people saying. are people are people are not saying in the right way because yeah. the is about the economy. Exactly. It's about alleviating the poverty of the people. So if people don't appreciate, you see, fact, you can become more. No, no, you understand. You know, I'm coming. What I'm saying is that the political culture. You see, it's the political culture. People don't want to hear Halifa or Syria. They don't want to hear what they are saying. So they will never hear it. The message is there. What they want to do, you might say. A lot of people don't relate with socialism as an ideology or whatever, or they don't understand that. But the reality is that they is laying out their policies. Absolutely. Do you understand? I always tell people, you see, a lot of people here jump to conclusion. Even those who support Dai. There are some people who will tell you that I support Dai because they have good policies. I said, have you ever read Dai's Gonga? Gonga. Have, have you ever read Dai's manifesto? Mm -hmm. Sometimes also we are easily carried away by the wave. Yeah. That we don't even engage the documents of these political parties. You have never read Dai's manifesto. You have never read, just like the, my conversation with a young lady yesterday. Yeah. When he said UDP, she said UDP has no policy. I said, UDP has a manifesto. Yeah. UDP has five-point agenda. Five point you idea. cannot come and tell people that UDP has no policy. Go and read it. Mm -hmm. So we must be able to engage with these policies. Even though, like, um, you know, some people do engage with Dai's policy, and I appreciate that. What mm -hmm. she's doing is that to engage with Dai's policy and realize that it's not feasible. Yeah. Uh -huh. There are a lot of folks out there yeah. who are unnecessarily attacking Halifa and Doi, blaming Halifa and Doi, saying that their policies are not good, when they have never even set their eyes on their, on on their documents. This is sad and yes, sir, I'm sorry if I'm just interjecting here and there. I agree with everything that he has said, but I th I'm, all I'm saying is, yes, you know that we have a, a phobia of reading yeah. in this country. Mm -hmm. People will not read it. And I think my issue lies with how they break down their yeah. agenda. Document. That is where what I'm saying. Yeah. The agenda. I've seen I've seen it. It. Read yeah, and exactly. Write. And that is really that is very significant. But, 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 I want to challenge you here. Yeah. yeah. How many times yeah. has President Jame or Adam Abaro really relate a message to Gambians that really, really concerns the life of an average Gambian based on tangible policy issues? No, no. If Dai is not, no, I'm coming. If Dai is not passing the right message to the people, or not passing the message, uh, it should be passed. Mm. Is Baro talking about real issues in the Gambia? But it does not say that. No, but, no, no, what I'm saying is, is the people okay. that are not willing to accept but, it. Is the people that are not willing to accept what Dai is saying? Okay. I don't like it. I'm not attacking. No, I'm not. Experience. I'm just from experience. I don't understand. I'm like, I'm not attacking Don. No, you're not. No, you're not. Let Abdullah come. Let Abdullah come. Let Abdullah go ahead. Let Abdullah come. I'm enjoying. I don't know whether we have kind of a virtual debate next. But, um, no, no. I, 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 I get the point that both Essa and, and Lamin are making. Yeah. But I have to associate myself with what Alima is saying. Yeah. Um, the reason why I flag you, when you said the sovereign national wealth, yeah. I don't have a clue what it means. <laughs> I don't know what it means, okay? I will tell you why. <laughs> 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 yeah, yeah. afterwards. <laughs> but the reason, the reason, no, this is just, um, the reason why I am, I am referring to uh, sovereign national wealth. Mm -hmm. See, it is, you're right, um, that, that, Government really never came out to tell the government people, apart from I'll build you hospitals and roads and schools. That's all they did, you know. Um, and, and UDP, unlike this election, that's why I said they've been very organized. Because under, from 94 
the last six years, it was always attacking Jammeh. Yeah. So it's more less to do with policies, mm. but more that he's arresting people, yeah. he's killing people, yeah. he's yeah. whatever, that, that kind of thing. Mm. So so perhaps whether Doi actually came at the wrong time, in existence at the wrong time, is another debate. Because the issue now is, if you're saying that um, Syria or Halifa's message is okay and ought to be easily um, consumed by the public, but that is not the reality. The reality is, it's not only about the message, but it's about how people relate. And frankly, the majority of the governments, ESA has only been here for three months or so, but I will, I will agree with you that, um, that is, as I were to hold a rally in Brikama or in, in Farafenya or in Karawan or in Base or Bansang right now, at any day, he will significantly pull. When I say crowd here, not, but people will more like to come and say they want to listen to him, whether maybe all those people are not actually coming to listen to policies and stuff like that, but probably because he's able to appeal better than, and they're coming to the same. Um, Doi has struggled with, 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 with that throughout. But in relation to the messaging, when you talk about the, the, is it the, the National Cooperative Corporate. <laughs> Bank. Corporate Banking System <laughs> and, um, and the centralization <laughs> in policy and the, and the sovereign national world. But the debate, there were a couple of times when Halifa was asked this when they were dealing with the issue of, of, of the economy and how did a DOI policy or a DOI government, exactly how a DOI government was going to be able to integrate the youth and women I within the economy. Halifa then started saying sex on something of the constitution. And I'm thinking there as a lawyer, I'm thinking, what, what is he on about? This is not a court. Okay? So, so instead of talking about policies and how employment, you know, and, and there I will associate, I think, ESA and CA close to that, empowering corporations. Okay, so Tony Blair, that's why they said he was a closet socialist because increase um, tax, no, lowering taxation for, for bigger corporations to so generate that wealth, to, to plow that wealth in, in frontline social services and social welfare. So you, 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 know, you, in a way, instead of hammering corporations, you empower them. But what you generate from that, you plow to that their social mobility and, and equitable distribution of, of the national resources and wealth. But there, even in the debate, when you talk about um, the, the national sovereign wealth or the cooperative thing and, and all the minute things, I don't understand it. And I'm saying, if, if I don't understand, and you have a problem, the father has a problem, yeah. that means, prima facie, there's a problem with the messaging. Yeah. But, but, but this, how, do you know that, how do you know that people don't understand this? Because, because, because that's what everybody says. No, see, no. <laughs> do you know what I mean? Alima understands very well. It's very clear. What they mean by national sovereign wealth is that the wealth that is created here from our natural resources should definitely be ploughed back to generate income and make the Gambian people employed and, and, and become income earners from our own uh, I mean resources and not, have to, and not having to depend on grants and loans. For example, they mentioned the Atlantic Ocean, which is true. Today, if you go, how many trawlers are there Gambian owned? They, they, they don't exist. They are Gambian owned, they are Chinese or Senegalese owned. And they are taking a lot of resources and selling it outside. If Gambians, if those trawlers had belonged to Gambians in Gambian waters, come on, that's our own wealth. That can go to develop our own areas in the sector. That's all they mean by sovereign national wealth. For example, they also said, if we are going to develop, we have to develop from the grassroots level. All right? All the revenues and royalties that are, for example, in our foot here, not long ago, this Dutch and some Chinese investors when they and put up something there for how many months and so they were there. For example, if all the Sanyang people who are taking all, all, the, all, the, all, all the sand from uh, Niakata, what's the name of the village there? But, now, if these royalties, instead of going to the area council, if part of it is going to Sanyang, to the village development committee, in a year, how much money, how many trips of sand come from Sanyang or Kata? In a year, millions of, I mean, trips. Now, if money has been going to the Sanyang VDC, Sarankeso, for all that time, how much money will Sanyang make? 
and that with their own money they can make their decisions to do what we want they don't want to do in Sanya. If that budget is not enough, they can go to the area council now and say, look, you are taking our compound rates, you are taking our we have developed, we have designed this project here, we are lack of funding, bring this money back to us. In that way, you know, you be easily identify projects will be easily identified from the grassroots level and, 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 and the feasibility studies be done and the budget is there, money is there already. That is what is Simply mean don't, you, don't you think? Don't you think? Um, <laughs> a a, a, a command will never understand the message because you told him that. <laughs> you know, let me go back. Let me go back to that. As I mean, what UDP, what UDP suffered from yeah. on the Jamme, doing to some extent suffered from that. That is misinformation. They were victims of misinformation on the Jawara. You know, the thing is, okay, I can agree. At the time, you know, at some point towards the end of the. Um, 1980s, communism came under attack and it was virtually, it collapsed exactly. all over the world. I remember in 1982, I remember very well, one of Jawara's campaign, he made one statement. That was in 92 election. Sidi Jatta was then the candidate. In fact, the first presidential candidate for Doe was Sidi Jatta. Yeah. I mean, Jawara said, the leadership of Doe is, is communist oriented. <coughs> And if they are smarter, they should save this country from an idea which is already collapsed around the world. Something like that, something of that sort. So that was a fair comment because the idea was uh, generally collapsing all over, no longer popular around. But you see, the kind of socialism that Doi has been envisaging is not so much as what Jawara and others wanted us to believe. But, but what has they got to do no, to be able to no, persuade us? No, no, no. The no, 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 messaging is no, misinformation. Is this is the messaging? Listen, Syria never talk about people <clears throat> losing their wives to others. But this is what I'm saying. I mean, we have not been able to I mean, jump. They never said that. The thing is, they have not been no, able to rebrand themselves. I mean, they no, I mean, UDP for the past 22 years has always been the victim. Yeah. And this is, have been their policy. But they also know that that is not enough. Now what we have seen in them, look at their five-point agenda. Mm -hmm. Even the lady in Jara Soma, understand, they're doing it in Mandinka, in Wolof, in Jola, in Sarawul. They're making efforts. They know that playing the victim card alone will not get them the enough votes. They have to also bring some policy and okay. let break me, it down. Correct. Let me let address, let me, let me, let me address the comparison. Let me address the comparison. Let me address the comparison. No, listen. Let me address the comparison. No, let me address the comparison. Every time he says that, he would say, let me address the comparison. Let me address the comparison. To be honest, Jam, we have had enough of the comparison. We have Let me address the comparison between Esa and Esa Fal and Halifa and all that. Okay, you talk about are just coming in within, within a couple of months. Two months. Been able to attract maybe you in your imagination uh, a lot more crowd than Doi could ma could could manage to do. You know that can be true in such a way. It does not in any way means that Esa had more knowledge or he had more clearer message than them. No. There's what do we call charisma in in in, in everything. If you want to public our life. If you have charisma, yeah, that's why you have populist politicians. They don't have any message, but because of their charisma or their fame, you know, it naturally attract people to them. But, but I mean, that has happened in, 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 in a lot in SR's case. There have been people who only fall in love with SR because they love his face on television. I'm not listening to Doi and Halifa any day, any time. I'm, 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 I'm Halifa speaks, I'm you telling you, he I'm, I'm telling you, he has I'm, that. I'm, I'm, he, he has charisma, but I'm telling you what, what actually made SR so popular so much and so in short time is not yeah, so much as he has a very, you know, a very substantial, uh, I mean, to he may have that. But he, he has charisma too. He has charisma. He's extremely famous. Yeah. And I, I mean, I can tell you an example. This current prime minister of Britain, mm -hmm. when he was defeating the mayor of London, yeah. nobody told him he was a serious yeah. person. Yeah. If you if you know the mayor, the integrity and personality of the mayor was Ken Livingston at the mm -hmm. time. You compare it to uh, Boris, Ken, you Boris. compare it to Johnson. Yeah. Who was, I think, what was he doing? Comedy, it was, it was some sort of a comedy on television, on a television show. But Ken Livingston said this. He said, look, I fear in this election, because why I fear is that 
a lot of young people are going to vote. They don't know issues. They only fall in this love. They fall in love with you know Livingston on tele uh, or I mean Johnson on television. They don't know the issues, and they are the ones going to vote. And that's what happened. He defeated him uh, in that election. It's only after that people come to show or notice the intelligence of. Of, of Johnson, you know, to appreciate him more of somebody of substance. But at the time, and that's easily, that's the case of, of Isafal. I mean, he's extremely famous. And that has earned him a lot of attraction, purely because they fell in love with him. But people were in love with Jawa. Ah, ah, yes. Okay, in, in, in another way, way, yes. Even Sirip Dibab. So again, it brings us back into that um, issue. And I uh, referred to this uh, three weeks ago, the release, the issue of President Obama. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Especially now, not even 1980s, but especially now, this 21st century, 24-hour <coughs> media age. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, somebody like Tony Blair. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, I remember in his, when he went to the U.S., um, Condoleezza Rice in a book said, when the, this is immediately in 2000, when uh, he went to visit Bush, he was like a rock star politician because he was this young yeah. British. Yeah, exactly. He was only in his mid-40s or something like a lawyer and yeah, the rest of it. So, but Tony, then this guy had the same thing as well. Uh, Obama. Bill Clinton. I even Obama. Bill Clinton, Obama, and the rest of it. So exactly. but even going back to, to Hillary Clinton, yeah. losing to Obama um, in ah, the primary, but also was, the other one. Yeah, yeah. But because people said she was too stiff yep. and wooden. Rigid. So in uh, too rigid. rigid. So in politics as well. And this is part of the packaging. Yeah. So for example, and that is something. Um, Gordon Brown. Yeah. Why did Gordon Brown fail? Uh, simply because he lacked charisma. He lacked charisma. <laughs> that's what I'm so, saying. So, that's so right. charisma probably is. I mean, is three Cameron, of Cameron had charisma. Exactly. exactly. But exactly. not everybody knows yeah. Brown had no substance. No, they say he's one of the the the, the most intelligent people ever to in terms of policy. Exactly. Policy. But, but you know what Tony Blair actually described to him that he he lacked emotional intelligence. Exactly. And that emotional intelligence covers the whole issue about charisma and how you relate to people and stuff like exactly. that. So, Doi, uh, and these are wonderful. I had an opportunity to, to have a, a, an interaction with 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 um, Sidia uh, about 2017 or 2018 in relation to uh, a constituent who was deprived of his land. Somebody came with more money uh, in that area because they had lots of cattle came and they, so so he came and, and instructors and you know, but we're not getting to the specific, but what what really intrigued me was because he was fighting the corner of that poor guy, the poor farmer. Mm -hmm. And I'm thinking it's a typical Gambian politician. Well, did in, they, would have, in they would have aligned themselves mm -hmm. with the guy that had money because mm -hmm. that's what would be more beneficial to you. Mm -hmm. So in terms of that, nobody can question them. Nobody can question their integrity mm -hmm. and, 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 and their credibility and stuff like that. But what we have issues with um, is, is that, especially after 2017, mm -hmm. that you will be, there have been some little bit of, maybe people like that have come in, you see some slight rebranding. Yeah. Yeah. But UDP, for example, done significant yeah. rebranding. So it is Doi's duty to make sure that they are more appealing. Yeah. Uh, charisma is not something that you can buy, but it's something that you can enhance. And, 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 they, and they have the faces. I know we can go on and They are a party of substance. They, they are. are. So nobody can question that. You can't question that. Yeah. So, so why, are, why are we tired <laughs> <gambling? laughs> Why do we need a waste of our time? All this long. <laughs> all this <laughs> long. Where is the picture of his name? But they're not the only one. If you look at global politics, if you look at global politics, if you look at global politics, you always find people with substance that are less appealing. Bernie Sanders. Exactly. 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 But even the hair is not appealing. You know, it's a message where John, if it's, if it's not working, change it. Absolutely. The messaging needs to yeah. change. We are not saying change core things. No, but, but just things. Yeah, yeah. 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 Political but I think they're doing well when it comes to now key. bringing young no, people. I see them. I wherever them. you see Halifa, you see Jihad. That looks very... I'm more young I think they even doing a bit of sabbat now. I think they have people from diaspora yeah. this time. Definitely. they're coming. And they're coming. And now, Chav, we're going. We're in enough of the yeah. yeah. Halifa. Yeah. You're doing more of a campaign. Yeah. 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 Um, <laughs> enough of, enough of uh, Halifa I'm doing. Now, let's look at Esa. We looked at all these other candidates. Esa Fah. Um, two months into the political scene, he's pulling a lot of crowds, and I said, look, I, I don't know, it's going to be after December 5th, we are going to realize either it's the TRRC fame or SI is relating to the Gambian people. But what we cannot discount is the number of people that are coming to his crowds. It's, and 
I, I recorded Ali Esa today, and I was telling his campaign team, look, if, if I was part of this campaign, I would have used this guy more often to be speaking on the media and making statements like this. Eloquent. When he speaks, you listen. Charismatic, charming, all of those things. But he's coming into the political scene. What do you think of Esa by far? Well, Esa came at a crucial, crucial time in our politics. Um, crucial in the sense that um, you know, he was part of a job that was, that was part of the transition of this government, the transition project which has to do with the TRRC. Having done a great job at the TRRC, um, a lot of Gambians that you talk to do appreciate ESA for the sacrifice that he has done and for the wonderful job that he has done at the TRRC. I think that's a plus for him coming on the political scene. Like Cham said, the TRRC fame, everybody knows ESA in the TRRC, either the television or the radio. And I think a lot of people are going to start to, you know, see what he can offer. You know, doing well at the TRRC, can we give him chance to, to do well at the national level, at country level as president? But then I, I think also one thing is working out for ESA well is that, you know, coming at this time when this country is at a standstill, mm -hmm. the economy is stagnant, you know, deplorable health care situation, um, having a terrible education system, nothing functioning absolutely, um, it's an opportunity also. And if you listen to ESA, all his um, campaigns, He's been talking about these things, especially corruption. He's been emphasizing corruption, corruption, corruption that is damaging this country, which is the cancer to our development. I think he's relying more on some of these things and also relying on the weakness of the incumbent, um, seeing him as someone who is a certified betrayer, who, you know, in fact betrayed the victims because these are the people that ESA was working with closely. Um, these are the people that ESA had interest in, in seeing to it that if you, if you listen to his... Um, closing remarks at the, at the TRRC, you, you realize that he is interested in justice for the victims, and he relates more with the victims. And having to come to this stage knowing that, and I think that is one of the reasons why ESA in fact has to come and contest, that he knows very well that this incumbent could have the opportunity to be re-elected. And the incumbent is not interested in implementing the recommendations of the TRRC. Um, only, only when Jame rejected the NPP APRC alliance that this government is probably, you know, thinking twice um, about this whole thing. So probably ESA is thinking in his mind that um, my job at the TRRC will be a complete waste for three years if, if, if we allow this man to, to lead again. And who knows, uh, maybe he's coming to do this spoiler effect in elections, that is to take from the incumbent um, and, and, and deny him of, of, of victory, just as... Um, Mama did in 2016. So, I mean, his international reputation also, a lot of people, because he's also been selling this message out there to tell people what he's been doing at the international level. I think that is also adding weight in, in some corners, you know, not, not necessarily an average Gambian voter, but, you know, an average educated Gambian who is able to read and write and at least understand issues at a basic level, sees as someone who did well, tremendously well, working in leadership positions in international organizations or bodies, you know, leading, um, leading you know, a lot of people, group of people from diff diverse backgrounds in different international forums. I think that is also adding to that. But, you know, people do talk about, you know, some of his... Um, weaknesses, some say where well, he's arrogant, some will say, you know, he pom he's so pompous. But I think I've seen humility in Esa as well. I've seen him get down to the average Gambian out there, the suffering Gambian out there who is affected. Um, you know, we've seen his magnanimity in trying to donate to people who have been affected here and there. But then also, the question of politics comes in. Somebody might ask this question to say, yeah. why is Esa doing that all oh. of a sudden? Probably he has an agenda. We've seen the president disclosing what the meetings that are, which is very unprofessional of him. But anyway, not a surprise. It's Adam Abaro <laughs> once again. Um, but then, you know, all in all, I think he's not a bad candidate. I mean, if I am to, you know, um, gate the candidates for this election, I think, you know, he could be a good option um, for Gambia. Um, he might have his weaknesses here and there, but he has done tremendously well for the country. Um, I don't know whether I should move to Ablai and then allow the rest to go. Yeah, go, yeah. Yeah, Ablai, not in much. I have not known um, much about him. No. I think I just had, when he's coming, I just had that he was the former, even when he was the um, director general, whatever, of civil aviation. Civil aviation. I did not know him, to be honest. Mm -hmm. uh, but I've heard that, you know, he, he has done well there. Um, I've just interacted with him once, not even interacted, listened to him once. That is at the signing of the Code of Conduct. He's eloquent um, in terms of um, 
the policies, like you said, they are not easily accessible. I've not been you know, able to capture most of his meetings that he has held, the messages and all that. But I see him as someone humble, as someone who is you know, not on personal attacks, mm -hmm. um, someone who is trying to you know, relate with the Gambian people, probably not an experienced politician. He's also struggling right. in sending out his message there, in relating with an ordinary Gambian voter. But as a first-timer, maybe he's not you know, looking for victory. What he's looking for is also to test his political strength. Um, but I also think that, I've, I've been saying this, it might not only be Esa who is looking for a spoiler effect to deny battle victory, but it could be Abdullah. Abdullah. Because if you listen to the, the, like the interview today, mm -hmm. saying that vote for all but not battle, mm -hmm. it shows that maybe he's saying that, look, we might not be the right one. <laughs> we, might not be, we might not win necessarily. We might not necessarily win. But vote for anyone but battle. Meaning he might also be out to deny you know, Baro an opportunity to, to win election. You think Abdullah will take votes from Baro uh, or the UDP? No, well, well, you see, this is also the interesting. Is I, I see people, people, I know the reason why people say that um, he might take from the UDP. They look at the ethno-linguistic aspect of yeah. it. Um, but don't, don't be surprised. Don't be surprised. that Because looking at CA, Ismaila came. It's the same in Abdullah, looking at their ethnic background or yeah. whatever. But you know, Ismaila is not necessarily taking everything from, from, from the UDP. Yeah. Okay, there are a lot of people here. In fact, CA is not contesting now. You talk to some people, some citizens alliance, they're divided now. Yeah. Some will be going to NPP, some going to UDP, some going to DOI. Right. So it, it, will, it wouldn't matter here. Ab, you know, looking at Abdullah's ethno-linguistic background, don't only look at Abdullah, but you look at the people following him. This might not necessarily be people from Abdullah's tribe. They might be people from other tribes. Right, right. And these are people who might necessarily vote for Baro if they have no opportunity. Because now people see the contest as between UDP and NPP. And some are saying that, well, I prefer the lesser evil to them. Do you understand? Baro to be there than, than Dabo to be there. So Abdullah, we cannot tell for certainty um, the people that he might have gone for. Esa, the reason why we think he can take from Baro, because Esa could have victims on his side. And if Barrow had addressed the issue of the victims, probably they would have voted for him. Right. So these are potential voters for, for Barrow, but now ESA is taking them because they've, they feel that they've been betrayed by the president, they've been let down by the president and all that. So Abdullah, it depends. I don't want to conclude on that, you know, which party he will likely take from. But I think also he will likely take from, you know, two of them if he's to take, but not necessarily to say that he will take a greater percentage from this, um, from Dabo also. Well, I think... Oh, okay. Well, go ahead. Well, go ahead. Well, the queue, the queue go, is there. Go ahead. <laughs> okay. Go ahead. Okay. I, um, as far as Esa Fal is concerned, mm -hmm. um, when it was rumored that he might be interested in politics, and the, initially I thought, no, that could not be true. But then when I started seeing his supporters, or his admirers at the time, I don't call them supporters because he had not... And yeah. then made his intention politics. <laughs> when I began to see them um, printing T-shirts, um, so-called fan, uh, fan base or fan base, I begin to believe that uh, this man might be interested in running for politics. Okay, I did not feel good about that at the time no. because um, I had seen that uh, that kind of action may play into the hands of the critics of the TRRC, mm -hmm. who believe that, look, uh, the way things are going, this has been politicized. It's a you know, witch hunt against uh, President Jami and all those who are close to him so that they can be discredited, uh, so that somebody can gain political points or political base from that. So that's why I did not feel good when uh, I started having rumors that he might be interested in politics because I said that will play into the hands of the, uh, the critics. And it did at some point because yeah, even the, the APRC were very bold, mm -hmm. you know, uh, at the time, especially when Barrow started coursing up to them, they got very bold and they even attacked the very process of the TRRC uh, because they are taking SFR as an excuse as look at this guy who was heading this institution, whom everybody held to have been doing, doing a good job. Now he's interested in politics. We have told you this all along, that this thing is a political witch hunt against Jammeh. And Esafar was the face, even though he, he might be not the head. I mean, he said, and others were commissioners, probably more senior in terms of uh, hierarchy. But he was the face, uh, the, in what we call in sports, the poster face of the TRRC. So for him to be interested in politics at that time, 
I thought that wasn't good uh, for the integrity and image of well, the for, TRRC. For, for, the, for the APRC, I think they had no faith in the TRRC at all from since the, the beginning. Regardless. So it's not an excuse. Regardless of whether it's inside into politics or not. But, but enough, yeah, I understand. I understand the but point you're coming from. But not for APRC. For them, they have no moral authority to speak on that. Whatever yeah. argument they have, mm -hmm. let's ask community, let me credence yeah. 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 Right. that kind of thing for I people know. who believe them. Yeah. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. Now, I have always said, when people tell me that Barabobaro has a right to continue, so why, why are you bothered with, you know, to say that he should have stepped down as he promised? He has a right to continue. Yes, I also has the right. So, the same way people say, yes, I has a right to join politics. Yeah. But then you don't, you don't, it is, that is the type of, that is the, this is the type of uh, situations where you look at the greater good than yourself. Yeah. Okay. I knew that Ezra's coming to politics is going to bring credibility problems for the TRRC. I regretted yeah. that. Yeah. That's the only bit I'm sad about mm -hmm. is coming now. Yeah. And in fact, in my personal opinion, I think he would have gathered a uh, much more credibility, a much more uh, influence and respect if he had stayed away and waited until, let's say, another cycle of elections. You know, he would have been already been trusted and remembered to be a man who really uh, fought the cause of justice in the Gambia. He would have been remembered, and he would naturally have been more acceptable to uh, a lot of people without any queries or anything. I think so. But then, you know, I, I also think, and President Barrow said it last night. I don't want to agree with President Barrow, but he said, "Esa used the fame he got from the TRRC instead of being concerned." about the plight of the victims, he instead used the victims as a political platform to get fame yeah. uh, and that all. I didn't entirely agree with that, but I agreed that Ezra had no political base. He was barely known in the Gambia before the TRRC. Uh, I mean, so whatever prompted him to go in politics, he certainly drew a lot of gain mm -hmm. from the fame he got from television, mm -hmm. from yeah. doing That's TRRC mm -hmm. work. Mm -hmm. So that kind of big, Denied. You know, denied. That cannot be denied. Okay. Yeah. He may be concerned about the government at the time, the government's lukewarm attitude towards uh, towards uh, victims and tear, and he's right in doing so. Yeah. Because the government, we all do, had not shown any seriousness whatsoever, no commitment to address the issues that were being addressed at the TRRC. So he could have been inspired or angry about that, and that can prompt him to consider running for the election. He had, had said he but you know, to many, many times, even before he made his intention clear, that look, when the government refuses to implement this, then the people have a choice to vote that government out. Yeah. He's been saying yes, that before he made it clear. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so, so that lukewarm attitude <coughs> of the government towards the victims and towards the uh, transitional justice thing could have also propelled him to go. To go. But I was concerned, okay, here is an intelligent man. What made him believe that he can win an election this soon, especially you know, on a field where everyone seemed to be already entrenched in their position. Baro won in three months. Now, listen, that's a different thing. Baro came with a, on a plan. Two years. No, 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 no. Baro, no, no, no. circumstances are different. Mm -hmm. The circumstances are different. Mm -hmm. Baro came and found a prepared yeah. platform. Yeah. All right? So, you cannot compare a circumstance to somebody who has just fresh from nowhere. And within three months, you want to build a, a following uh, that will equal the big ones that have been existing for 20, 25 years. I thought, I said, is this man either too ambitious, over ambitious? So maybe he lacks some good judgment because, or perhaps he want to measure, you, you know what I mean, in line with, uh, he, you know, maybe he want to test his popularity or, yeah. uh, you know, and measure his acceptance perhaps in this election, you know, from a base. Mm -hmm. and then come back formidably next, next time. time. Yeah. So I, I, I knew he can never said he definitely believed that he can take State House from this election. He knew I I being an intelligent man that that's not something though. Being an intelligent man I, that's not possible. He knows that very well. believe they're going to win. No, I, I, don't, <laughs> I, I, don't, think, I, I don't think so they so I don't think they are dumb or daft enough to know that <laughs> that's not possible. That's not possible. <laughs> they are too intelligent. So so that, that, Alima, I think yes. we are rushing because of time. Yeah. Um, yes, I think for um, I agree with him yeah. for, for some some of the points he made. Definitely the TRRC effect. Yeah. Is there 
and I believe him not having any like political background in the Gambia, people not knowing him, that will play a role. And if you look at the timing, um, two things. I think um, for Esa coming in, he's saying it's too early. It's a now or never. We um, never think maybe for him. Mm -hmm. Like this is when the admiration, the fame might be fresh right. at the people's uh, behind at the back of the people's mind, as opposed to. Um, the, the next election cycle and him being an independent candidate also might affect that. We know that we parties, we see that with CA mm. that uh, this year it hasn't worked but we, we see a party that would, that would um, like go into <coughs> future political ventures, maybe MP and all of that. But then for an independent candidate, not having that institution set yet, so the issue of, of timing and uh, like I said, um, the TRRC effect and then I think I go back to when Essa was saying that we've seen him in, into other things, like phil being a philanthropist. People like me would say, it's not, nothing against him, but then all of that not happening behind, behind the because, cameras. Yeah. Yes, so every time he was, every distribution of anything happened in front of the cameras that it was. We, so I, I saw that that was sort of as a strategy, testing mm -hmm. the waters of, 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 of his popularity. And those things started coming in because we know these things they don't make their mind up. It's, it, it started happening while he was still at the, the lead council yeah. at the TRC. And that again can be problematic with the credibility. They've done a beautiful job. The ESA, the, the rest of the TRC, they've done coming from a country like us, they've done it. But we know. Truth commissions are very fragile. Yeah. We've seen a lot of them that do not necessarily make it. So um, the implement doing that, coming up, going into a poli political career, while he was still not announcing it, but we saw it. Yeah. People saw, we saw it, it. that People yes, saw it, yeah. these things. So that sort of questions. Um, sometimes it will fool those who were um, questioning the credibility of the TRRC and the timing that it is, is not implemented yet, again, making it prone to be uh, politicized. The uh, implementation might, 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 might suffer a bit. Whether he's trying to take votes from the incumbent, like, like as I was saying, Abdullah Jame maybe, maybe, mm -hmm. but for the way I see SFL speak, the confidence that, that he shows, I don't believe he's doing. I believe this guy is racing for the state house. He believes that, that, that he can win. And that leads me to my uncertainties about his political prowess. Like, we know this guy, like, I admire him a lot as a legal personnel. His international um, credibility cannot be questioned how much he has done working for the ICC, the types of um, commissions that he's for, but him as a politician though is is questionable in some ways. Even some 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 parts of the debate, there were times in the debate that his comebacks. Um, I I believe for someone like me, I would like to see him more in the political process. Then we can understand SFL as as the politician. But for the lead council, for a legal person. I don't, I don't see that reflecting yet, that, that intelligence, that aura, that, that unquestionable legal like power that he has. I've not yet seen it translate into him being, being a politician. politician. Yes. So Abdullah like, Jame? There's still some gaps. Still some gaps. Abdullah Jame, not much, nothing much to say. Like, yes, I've not heard, I've not seen his policies. I've not heard from him. And I think that shows a lot of, he has a long way to go. People say that he's intelligent, that he's eloquent, uh, but we all know that's not enough. We need to more. The fact that he's not taking advantage of media coverages, we know, we say you guys are the fourth wheel of governance. Mm -hmm. If you want to get the information out there, people need to access. So that alone, that lack of political strategy is a big obstacle. So yeah. I think maybe Abdullah, NUP in the future, but for now, I don't see the chances happening and I don't have much to say about analyzing him as a politician. Yes, <laughs> I don't know how, <laughs> how, how balanced Abla is going to be about Esa. Um, <laughs> I, w I will. <laughs> I, I, uh, no, I, I, I think um, I think Esa is the kind of um, 
politician. I don't know whether he would describe himself as a politician or not, mm -hmm. but, but people who come into the field um, as a result of something. Um, I believe um, after we voted Jame out, mm -hmm. Gambians were desperate for change, uh, desperate for the sort of leadership that they had probably on the, on the Jawara and mm -hmm. even better. Mm -hmm. And that was the reason why when Halifa spoke in those tense moments in 2016, 2017, mm -hmm. people listened and he reassured the Gambian people. So the Gambian both here and the diaspora um, really felt that the, that the transition government had a lot of political capital to leverage upon to really transform Gambia massively in terms of um, some structural uh, institutional changes and, and, and the like. Unfortunately, if you come back to from 2017 to 2020, 2021, the transition derailed. Um, price of basic commodities skyrocketed. Um, mortality rates in terms of childbirth, uh, women mm -hmm. delivery, and, mm -hmm. and, it, and it is not denial that our healthcare system is, is not functioning as it ought to be. Everything is expensive, electricity not working, and the rest of it. So, and I believe this is why SR came into the fray. Mm. Because at the TRRC, he, he exhibited an aura. Nobody questioned his ability. Five days a week or four days a week, people saw him, and, and they saw that he spoke the truth. Um, he didn't sigh away, he, he confronted powerful people. Yes, yes. And in the typical Gambian context, somebody like... Um, um, no, uh, somebody like... Um, um, uh, this guy, one of the most... The lawyer that, that appeared at the commission, the, the first attorney general on the... On the yeah, Lamin yeah. Jabato. No, no, no. No, uh, no um, bye. Uh, Papa, bye. Papa, bye. Yes, yes. People like that. Ordinarily, because of you know the guy's seniority and the rest of it, but as I confronted, no matter who appeared before him, army generals, ministers, and they tell them this is what you did and this is what that kind of thing. So I think he saw the Gambian people, mm. uh, at least Gambian people in their di dining rooms and in the booths and the tire places started discussing that you know what Gambia things are not going right and and the kind of leadership that we have political leadership uh, sometimes the muscle syndrome or corruption but it looks like there is somebody here that we actually have capable Gambians um, intelligent Gambians who speak well and do the right things remember because of the disintegration of the coalition they came a vacuum mm -hmm. in terms of leadership mm -hmm. so in a way I think through the work the SR's work at the TRC he was able to fill that kind of kind of void in terms of leadership mm. because people I speak to people in the diaspora uh, who have no interest here but they say when we see this guy speak it, it looks like you know the, the, that he knows what he's doing he's mm. capable he's, he's able so I think because in our previous discussions uh, we, we talked about this um, it came to a point you know what Ismaila said about Barrow being clueless and stuff like and we came to realize that the honeymoon period is over that frankly we have a head of state who really <laughs> is not up to task yeah. Um, and you look at corruption and everything else that is, that is ongoing. So I think ESA would have looked at that vacuum, probably also motivated by individuals who would have approached him mm. and say, we know you're doing this, but, but things are simply not working. It doesn't look like the recommendations of the TRRC, the final recommendation, and the good work that you've done would go to waste. Um, because it looks like after the collapse of the Janet Commission, after the collapse of the CRC, <laughs> and, and then that tells you the trend yeah. of yeah. where we are heading. Mm -hmm. Then you know TRRC is going to be feel a similar fate. <laughs> uh, so, so I think it's a combination of all these factors, and then it's a, and then people speaking to him, and and, and then you thinking, okay, uh, probably toying with the idea and say, you know what, I am gonna. But I, it is my, I, it is my belief that 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 his decision to to join the race was is completely motivated by the desire to help the Gambian people mm. um, and, 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 and I believe uh, you, you raised an important point in terms of uh, the, 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 the TRRC 
um, although he's you know he, he's finished his work and his work was as lead counsel was to elicit the evidence uh, facts and present it to the, to the commissioners for their consideration mm -hmm. um, and he believed that he's done his work mm -hmm. and and then he can go and do yes um, there may be an element of substance in the argument mm -hmm. that 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 being in the fray mm -hmm. may may compromise that but you have to look at how much that will and, and where you, you sit on the debate. <coughs> However, um, ESA and others can also come with this um, counter argument that run two. One, he is a citizen like anybody else. Mm -hmm. He's done a thoroughly good job. Mm -hmm. That if he had done a poor job and he can nobody will care. Mm -hmm. uh, because that will just uh, expose his limitations and inadequacy. But because He's done a terrifically fantastic job. Mm -hmm. People are now saying, because you've done this fantastic job, you should wait until five years. But again, you can come to the conclusion, <coughs> a week, a day is a long time in politics. Mm -hmm. A day. Mm -hmm. A week is a long time in politics. The demo by force utterances, only a few days, mm -hmm. just shows you how mm -hmm. just one thing can be so, can propel you success in politics or completely damage mm -hmm. your, your political career. Mm -hmm. So for example, SR now, in his consideration, would now say, what do I do now? Um, it's not like I am doing this in the middle of the TRC. The proceedings are finished. Mm -hmm. I have compiled the report given to the commissioners for their consideration. So I've done mm -hmm. what I am supposed to do. Do I then wait until the next election cycle? One, like you said, when mm -hmm. the government people would have forgotten mm -hmm. who he is. Mm -hmm. One. Um, mm -hmm. and, and secondly, when there could be over intervening factors that he doesn't have exactly. con con control over uh, again. But again, he's human like the rest of us. Mm -hmm. um, Politics, everything is about timing. Mm -hmm. yeah. So for him, this is the best time for me to join mm -hmm. politics. And therefore, my currency is up high. Mm -hmm. So why should I wait until mm -hmm. my currency has gone so, so low mm -hmm. and yeah, then so I join the fray? Yeah, so, so, yeah, so, but I, but I, believe, I believe genuinely, and I believe genuinely, hand on heart, that ESA believes in the plight of the Gambian people. Mm -hmm. ESA cares about that woman in Sapo. ESA cares about that woman in 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 Pakoro. is that a pr um <laughs> no no no, no. But this how do you feel this this one, 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 um can i just i don't know the regards to the crowd that he's able to pull that yeah. lamin said that uh, we we attest to the fact that hey would you also attribute that that's anyone to the fact that it's timing and again that Gambia is yearning a different type of politician. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Would you? Would you? I'm not I saying agree. that he doesn't um, have like passion. No, no, for, no, I, I, but I, then no, would, you, would you? Would would no, would you I say agree. that I think it's a, a it's time? A, it's a, like an one. accidental politician. Yeah. Um, but when I mean accidental, you have some of those people who, uh, in the West, who go into at the moment the the leader of the Labour Party, mm. um, um, Keir Starmer, yeah. is a lawyer. He was actually. The director of the uh, for public of DPP is almost like um, an independent body that prosecutes. Mm -hmm. yeah. So yeah. it's QC. Um, I was surprised and shocked when he was only elected into the Commons in mm. the 2015 election, yeah. mm -hmm. and it's now the the the, the leader of the, the, leader of the, of the biggest uh, opposition party, party. One of the biggest. Party. So so for somebody like him again, mm. um, when you see his statements, it's like he entered the fray simply because he believed that this last five has been. Um, in, in Britain has been um, consumed by the issue of Brexit mm. yeah. and that the, 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 uh, the Conservative government has failed to mm. deliver on promises and therefore you need a certain kind of leadership mm. and believe that there is a vacuum, believe that the kind of leadership that, they ha that the Labour Party the had Labour, yeah. cannot really uproot mm. and therefore you have to have somebody. So this is a lawyer, career lawyer QC, nothing to do with politics, who's decided now to, to come. So, so I also look at as a in a similar vein. Um, and I think that probably explain why, explains why a political party wasn't even formed. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, so this is almost like an independent sort of thinking movement. Mm -hmm. um, and, and to change sort of leadership um, and, and, and the direction of, of this country. Okay. That is so why I think all the more reason I said, how did he fail to realize that I'm going into a field where, I mean, all this... I mean, people are so entrenched in the positions they are holding no, that no. I'll find it difficult to find. Do you, don't you think mm. that that ESA by Anton Defin mm. has significantly? Can you believe mm. when Obama declared his candidacy in America as well, mm. a black person? Mm -hmm. 
Remember, if you look at this political party, the, the, the Republicans and the, and the, Democrats. And the Democrats in America as well, mm. the kind of people that they had. Mm. So you look at, um, a, well, a mixed race person, somebody whose father is actually, it's not even American, it's, it's, it's from it's an African. African. Yeah. African. Yeah. And, 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 and if you look at the history, people like Bush, um, yeah. coming from the background that mm. he came from. Mm -hmm. um, and you look at, for example, Hillary Clinton, whose mm. husband yep. um, was former president. Mm -hmm. And you look at this guy, poor guy, because mm -hmm. he had nothing then, mm -hmm. apart from intelligence and being a Senate in, 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 in the state of Illinois. Mm -hmm. To be able to defeat that woman in the primary, yep. be able to defeat somebody like John McCain, it yes. tells you nothing is impo impossible in, in politics. politics. <laughs> well, but then, well, 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 let's see well, what well, happens well, in well, the well, 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 will be able to translate in votes. Yeah. For me, that's what I look forward to. Because the number of people that you see behind him, it's it's, it's my role. Is that going to be, is that the TRRC theme, mm -hmm. or are we, is he able to translate that? <laughs> but finally, 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 we have to look at the regions. Mm. Which regions, like if you look at West Coast, who do you think has the upper hand? When you look at Elara, let's look at that. I mean, you don't want to predict, but let's look at the regions. Mm. Banjo, Lamichan, who do you think, you know, has the upper hand in Banjo? Well, I will share without fear of... Uh, contradiction or fear of being proven wrong that uh, Banjo will almost certainly vote Paro. LRR came? Uh, you don't need any explanation. You just need me to... Mm, yeah, okay. No. I, I want to say a few words. Go ahead. Go ahead. It's time, yeah. Oh, okay. I, I, I know that uh, Banjo people has a, f a UDP phobia. Okay. And, and I look at the votes that were cast uh, in the mayoral elections. Mm -hmm. Uh, because the presidential election was a different thing, actu actually. I realized that uh, if the opposition were united against uh, uh, Rohi Lo, mm -hmm. um, you know, she probably wouldn't have got any chance. Yeah. And uh, I think also her victory also had to do with the fact that she herself had a banjo mm -hmm. background, and that helped a lot. Yeah. But <laughs> UDP is not quite a very strong force in Banjo, even though that could change, but I think uh, it would not be big enough for it to overturn uh, the kind of attraction I see uh, Barrow has there, and of course other reasons like uh, Banjulians being UDP phobia. So okay. I want to believe that uh, uh, Barrow will win there. Okay. That will be difficult. Again, in the mayoral election, talent, charisma and personality help a lot mm -hmm. in pulling votes uh, to his side. Um, uh, okay, uh, and again, if you look at there, uh, and the opposition votes against uh, him, if combined, uh, is more than his. Yeah. Um, so if um, he is able to, well, of course, uh, after the elections and because of his good work, mm -hmm. I, I want to believe that the UD has a lot of support there. Um, but then uh, most of the key people who are in UDP, there are people like uh, Unda Yang yeah. and others have uh, crossed over to the NPP. And you are going to look at the, because we, can, we don't want to say, we don't, we don't want to talk about it, but it's a reality, the ethnic <laughs> dimension of uh, KM, mm -hmm. uh, you tend to believe that it will be a struggle now for you to you say that it's going to be clearly for UDP. That is not the case in West Coast. Okay. West Coast region is formidably behind the UDP. And, and, that, and, and most importantly, it has the biggest, the largest number of votes uh, in this country, 360,000 votes. 59, yeah. Yeah. LRR is safe uh, for uh, UDP. Uh, there is no doubt that LRR, that is the Kians and the Jaras and the Kabadas, uh, the LRR is strong, uh, the UDP is stronger there, there than, 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 than the... CRR, URR? I want to believe URR will go for uh, well, Barrow, but then uh, it will be a depleted majority because I see that Mama Kande, who also come from the area, still command a respectable following. Even the uh, double of the UDP has, uh, you know, has uh, a very, very strong places like the Sandus, <laughs> don't be surprised, uh, and the Tumanas uh, and the Willis. Um, those votes will go between UDP and uh, DOI. Uh, so I would say that uh, uh, NPP may win in URR. CRR? 
Well, I think uh, that one is close because I see UDP has a strong presence and also because of the ethnic uh, uh, thing, NPP is also uh, have a, a significant following there. I, that would be too close to call. Too close to call. Yeah. And then not bank, I think, finally. Well, not bank, it is the UDP which has the strongest and the most populated areas in their control. Uh, if you go to the Nyomis, uh, the, 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 the most densely populated villages, they are UDP. But the central body, lower body of Balibu, most of those are UDP. It's only the uh, satellite villages surrounding these big settlements that uh, you can expect uh, NPP to get. Because if you leave the Baribus and the Nyomis, you go to Sanyal too, the UDP has a strong presence there. So generally, it is the UDP's uh, basis that Mr. Barrow and the NPP had to attack and disintegrate if they want to dream of uh, having a majority. Um, I think I'll leave this one to my <laughs> co-panelists with, with this analysis of Huku because even looking at him just basing it on um, NPP and UDP alone, um, I am not quite yeah, Because the others, the others uh, uh, they wouldn't like to hear, but then the others are... Uh, uh, pretenders. You you're making it look like this is a two-man race. Two yes, man almost race and, and, um, almost I, I would say it can be I would go different. back to yes, an indifferent a bit. I would go back to saying that we've seen new dynamics. Yeah. We we've seen key new factors. So. I think I would leave that to my co-panelists. I wouldn't want to jump the gun here. And yeah, I'm sorry for... No, that's okay. I'm I think, I think Banjul is going to be, uh, for so many factors, mm -hmm. you know, um, Baro has done the, the roads there that make it possible. <coughs> Rohim Malik Law also, Banjul is not naturally um, UDP, but, but, you know, I'm sure they've done and see behind the scenes. Um, SI is Banjulian, mm -hmm. mm -hmm. and that will count for, for yep. significantly. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, so I wouldn't. Uh, I would go for. I'll go for. Um, a slightly SI uh, margin in in Banjo. Mm -hmm. KM mm -hmm. has so many factors. Yes. I will agree with you. KM, yeah. KM has so many factors. You know, um, we have to applaud Mayor Banjo for the tremendous work yeah, mm -hmm. he has done. You know, the, the, the amount of developmental work he's done over the last four years is, is immense. Mm -hmm. uh, but, but, but again, when it comes to politics and it comes to the kind of thing sometimes, um, if not linguistic considerations yeah, yeah. yeah. and biases. So, and we look at certain places, uh, populations in the KM. So that, that, would, um, that would influence. So, so um, yeah, it's, it's, it's hard for me to, to so, but, but um, the West Coast, I, um, the West Coast is huge and it's got, it's got um, significant numbers, no. but again, um, because of the, the, the inter-regional dynamics and ethnicity and stuff like that, so um, it's, it's, it's difficult. But I believe um, URR is going to be a split between... You did not finish and with West Coast. Yes, I'll, I'll, no, I'll come to that. But in terms of the URR, I believe it would be... Barrow is from there. He's spent a lot of money, money there. there. Yeah. Yeah. Significant amount of money. Uh, Mama Kande will have some support in Jimara mm -hmm. area and, and over places. Um, UDP would also, whatever. And I know SR campaigned aggressively in the URR uh, uh, as well. <coughs> in some of the um, communities all the way to 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 Pato area. Um, so so again, uh, no matter what we say here, we'll have to see. We may be completely shocked uh, by the numbers. And I believe SR would also um, have a significant presence in, the, in this era. Uh, Love is looking at me. Uh, you did not finish the uh, uh, West Coast. Then, then West, West Coast. I think. West Coast is going to be um, face value. Face value, um, you would believe, um, because of the uh, the, the regions, Brikama, the Lamens, and the Yundums, um, and the Gunjurs, and Gunjurs. places like that, um, Busumbalas, that, that traditionally they, they, they've been UDP. UDP um, and you expect that. Um, uh, but again, because of the politicking, um, you, you know, you'll be surprised. Uh, that's why I'm, I'm, I'm trying to be cautious uh, in terms of what, 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 what may, what what may happen, happen. Mm -hmm. you know, so. Yeah.
Yes, well, interesting. Um, <laughs> where I want to start is to say that, um, you know, any candidate that is to win this election will have to secure KM West Coast combined, will have to secure a minimum of 260,000, 270,000 okay. if you want to win the election. Because I think with 360 out of the total votes, yeah. it's hands down. Um, that's a game over. Um, Banjul has 21,000 votes. Mm -hmm. You know, any candidate that is to win in Banjul will have to secure around 8,000, 9,000 votes. Mm -hmm. And it's a keenly contested area. Uh, we know it has always been um, incumbent. Um, but I think, if I'm not mistaken, in 2016, Jamal lost in Banjul. Mm -hmm. one well, generally, yes. Yeah, lost. yeah I yes. think he lost in Banjul, generally. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. So the dynamics have changed. If Banjul, if it was only UDP, NPP, SR was not there, probably we could have um, easily concluded that, you know, NPP will win there. But now the dynamics have changed, um, looking at SR as a, as a Banjulian. UDP, Rohi Malik Lo That's really struggled in Banjul yeah. when, he, when, when she won the elections there. I think she really struggled. Banjul is not naturally um, UDP stronghold. If you look at even the parliamentarians, it's one DOI and two um, PPP. Mm -hmm. So I think um, they might shock us anyway, but I think they will struggle in Banjul really. Um, for KM, still, like they said, the multi-ethnic setting nature um, of, 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 of KM, you know, will really play a part here. I think anyone looking for victory in KM will have to secure, because KM has, um, you know, 179,000. Mm -hmm. So you have to secure um, at least One 75. factor there, though, is that, uh, okay, uh, at the time of, after the, well, uh, okay, 2016, I mean, the major players were APRC and UDP. Yeah, that, that, yeah. But we seen that uh, the split in the, um, in the APRC could factor in here. Could factor in there, and that is yeah. why, that because is why, but like, G who the loyalists are exactly. GDC, GDC, yeah, GDC, GDC, yeah, right. GDC, yeah, right. GDC will play a part yeah, in this trend either for NPP or, or this trend for UDP. Yes. Do you yeah. understand? Yeah. So, so um, UDP yeah, that's KM. So KM well. will be keenly yeah. contested. Yeah. Yeah. But I think yeah. um, at the end of the day, the battle will be between UDP and NPP in KM. Coming to West Coast. Mm -hmm. West Coast is divided. It's like we have the Fonies and the Combos. So mostly, um, Combo is seen as the battleground. It's mm -hmm. where you know a lot of votes will come. They determine the president or whatever. West Coast, I think, will be mainly GDC, um, for the fact that you know Jame has endorsed the GDC. In yeah, in Fonie. I mean Fonie. I'm not saying entire West Coast. Yeah. I mean Fonie. Sorry. Yeah. So for Combo, um, UDP has a significant presence in Combo. We have both seen that, hands down. But then also we have to be cautious here. Um, due to the evolving nature of these settlements, um, yeah. the ethno-linguistic aspect of it. If you look at Lamen, you know, you could say, oh, majority of the but then there are people who are settling okay. in Lamen as well. Yeah. It's the same thing for Brufood, mm -hmm. you understand? It's the same thing for places like Gunju, all these estate agencies that are building, the, you know. So mm -hmm. those things are contributing. They could yeah. contribute. But I, I, am, I am predicting, um, I'm not predicting generally, but I'm predicting in Combo, probably UDP will have to, will win um, in Combo. Um, it depends on the margin that they will have, but I think they will. So if they are to secure comfortable victory in combo, they'll have to secure around 180,000 or 170 out of the 350. Yeah, they have to do more. 350. Yeah. No, but remember also, not three, the entire 359 might not vote. Do yeah. yeah. you understand? Yeah. So if they're able to secure 180, because 200 might be their target, but if they, I, I, I think it will be difficult for them to secure 200 in combo. Yeah. Going to ILRR, I think um, that's hands down. They have, if LRR has 54,000 of the votes. Um, so they probably, that would have be UDP. And if they are to secure comfortable victory there, it has to be around 35, 30, 35,000 of the votes. They have to secure that in, 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 in LRR. NBR has 109,000. Is the body bunkers there? Don't trust them. Well, <laughs> <laughs> so, in I go for the Akodonia. So, <laughs> NBR is uh, both in Yomi. I think also SR will do well. Yes. In in Yomi and yes. around those in Mama Kante. Yeah, Mama Kante will also. And, so and, and even Badibu. Yeah. Exactly. Uh, even, 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 even Badibu. Badibu. So N so NDR yeah. will be a kind of split in the sense that you will yeah. have Esa, Mama, and, and, Baro. and Baro obviously doing parts of Nyomi and also even UDP, yeah. parts of Nyomi, especially yeah. in the Upper Nyomi and the Jurunko and the Hakarang N. Yes. Even though they have the road there. Yeah, they are anyway. mainly UDP. So, um, so but, but then you go to, you know, CRR. You didn't has, say. Uh, 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 where do where you put your money on for you uh, for NBR? NBR. NBR. Yeah. You mean who will win there? Yeah. Yeah. And I think it will it will it will split. Mm -hmm. Do you understand? I am not I'm not I don't I'm not confident who exactly will win in NBR because of the factors, yeah. the body factor there. Yeah. Do you understand? So that will that will really depend on 
how much they're able to do in this last minute. Mm -hmm. CRR has 119,000 votes. Um, I think Baro will perform well yeah. in CRR, CRR. Um, parts of CRR, because also parts of CRR like the Nyani and you know, our UDP um, control area. So the I think they will. Doing you, uh, no, that's oh, that's the So the Nyani ends and all that, they'll be able to do well there. So yeah. it will be and also between. Do actually. Yeah, it will be between ESA, um, Baro, UDP, Mamakande here. Yeah. Yeah. And also ESA are able to perform a little bit well in CRR. In CRR. Well, I forgot to mention in KM, don't forget about Doi. Doi yeah. might be able to say that yeah. end. Yeah. I think they will do well there. Coming to URR. Yeah. That's the place that everybody is talking about, whether it's NPP or GDC or UDP. Parts of, I agree with him, parts of Sandu, Tumana, and UDP might be able to do well there. Really between DOI and UDP. And UDP. But I'm not surprised also if NPP is able to do well there. Um, Basse itself, as a, Basse as a it's, town, it's, Basse itself, it's NPP. Um, I think yeah, because of the, the road factor, the bridge factor, and also the market yeah. thing that they have got now, you know. So it might be... NPP, but also we have to be careful. I think I'm, I'm told that there is an aggressive campaign, yeah. you know, being done by UDP diasporans like the likes of Mamadou Kurubali, yeah. who are currently there, you know, because the NPP left and then now they went there to destroy, you know, going house to house campaign. So it's it's elections. It might um, shock a lot of people. I'm you know, still interested to see who wins Jimara. Though. Well, Jimara will. Baro yeah, Jimara will. Baro Jimara will definitely be Baro and uh, Baro and Kande. Kande. I don't think UDP will be able to yeah, do anything so in, in Jimara. Yeah. So um, entirely URR will be keenly contested. Now again, between um, Halifa, they might do well in Wuli, but yeah. that wouldn't give them, you know, yeah, a well significant well. number to compete yeah. in URR entirely. Yeah. So um, yeah, that's it. So coming I to, think, I, I think it, it is like I said, it is surely going to battle. The issue that's going to happen is going to be a depleted. Uh, uh, majority for him because Doi will take the asset. Mama Everybody will take will take the exactly, will exactly. So that's what I'm saying. So, like so, yeah, so, so overall, 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 at the end of the day, overall, at the end of the day, nationally, of the if you if you would want to win elections, um, you have like I said, combo, you have to secure around 180,000 mm. around that. Then K maybe you have to secure 70, 75,000, mm -hmm. and that will be 200 and something thousand, 250, 60,000. Whatever. Then you, you hope you hope that yeah, wherever you get there around LRR, you know, URR, whatever you. Get. Mm -hmm. I'm quite sure that um, if you're able to secure LRR, URR, CRR, NBR, if you're able to secure 100, even 100,000 or 110,000, yeah, combine. then combo 260, yeah. you're done. You're done. Yeah. That's hands down. Interesting. interesting. It's going to be an interesting match. Yes. Yes. You know, we have 962,000. So at the end of the video, we are expecting that 900 will vote. Yes. Yes. This election, the turnout will be good. If anybody that's yeah. about 250. So if you are 300 and something, that's yeah. like um, you are left with only maybe 500 and something thousand. Yeah. So 500 and something thousand, none of them will be able to get 300 and something thousand. Yes. I don't think so. 360, 370 will be game over for any party anybody. that is able that's to get secure. Oh, interesting, interesting. interesting. Thank you so much. I think this has been a long but interesting, interesting we made up for last week actually mm -hmm. and tonight is the end of political season but uh, tomorrow we will the, the other team will have a pre-election you know show at the IEC and Saturday we will be at the IEC from morning till night just we'll have the other teams I know look at as I look at me <laughs> in the morning and we'll come in later on in the day until you know yeah. and then the other team will take over mm -hmm. yeah. thank you very much gentlemen and lady and to the technical team thank you very much good night to you all and see you tomorrow at the independence uh, electoral commission bye bye december 2021 one of the gambia's most crucial elections is here at kerfatu we got you covered our team of credible and knowledgeable analysts will bring you exclusive analysis of the event step by step and ballot by ballot coverage. They will be joined by reputable studio guests to help analyze and break down key ballot issues to meet your needs. As candidates battle for the soul of the Gambia, our team of panelists will get you the information you need to make informed choices. Join our coverage, Race for the State House, every Thursday at 7.